What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Hot Mic here live on a Thursday afternoon, a rainy Thursday afternoon on the West Coast for sure. Uh, we're excited to be coming uh, back to you live for a second time this week to talk about so many things going on in the world of entertainment. I am the outlaw John Roca, joined as always by the insider who is uh, rapidly shooting up the charts in Hollywood as a man in demand and also with a fantastic newsletter. Jeff, how are you? Johnny boy, woohoo! Happy Thursday, baby. Happy Thursday, my man. Happy Thursday. Hey, did you see the Commanders hire the Cowboys defensive coordinator? What a boring hire. Anyway, so we're gonna get into so many things going on in the world of entertainment here. Of course, the news with Brad Pitt, and Tarantino, twenty eight twenty eight uh, years later, uh, stuff going on with the studios, Netflix, and Paramount, and what have you. So a lot gonna be happening here. In the so you're in good hands here on the show. But as always, the Streamlabs and Super Chats are open, so send them in. We only got two Streamlabs that have come through throughout the day, so send them in, and we will bring them up on the show as we go along. And, of course, remember to hit a like on the video, subscribe to the channel right now, and if you're watching later, leave a comment down below. And if you want to send a thanks of uh, financial support, hit that Super Thanks button down below and send in some money. So let's start it off here, Jeff. Let's start well. I mean, we have to start with the Brad Pitt news. This broke just a couple of hours ago here from Mike Fleming over on Deadline. Uh, he's saying that uh, that uh, Brad Pitt is in talks to reunite with Quentin Tarantino for his final film, The Movie Critic. Um, I, th there's no um, confirmation that it is a lead, the lead role, but Mike Fleming is suggesting that it might be. Uh, and, of course, we know the history of how this all came about. If you've read any of the recent interviews with Tarantino, how this all came about in terms of creating this uh, script for this particular film. But Brad Pitt, once upon, once upon a time in Hollywood, got that Oscar for uh, that role in uh, the recent uh, Tarantino film. So coming back to hang out with Tarantino, possibly this time the lead. What do you think about this? And where do you think he's going to slot in on this one? Is he the lead or is he one of the um, stronger uh, uh, secondary characters in, in the film? I mean, we just there was some breaking news that just happened, John. Just right, right there, was some there was some breaking news that just happened right now, oh and I'm going to tie it to Brad Pitt, okay? Because he uh, was technically involved. Okay. Um, Variety is reporting that Dave is going on hiatus. <laughs> that 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 uh, FX has not officially renewed the show for season four, and um, Bitch, we don't that, need the show with Dave news that there, okay, go ahead. there are no okay. current plans for a fourth season of dave right now listen dave's one of the best shows on tv and mm -hmm. if you watch dave john you would know that brad pitt was in the last episode so, so was rachel mcadams in the season that's what i've heard yes um so that's disheartening news because i've been listening to that little dicky dave album uh Peanut, uh all week mm -hmm. and it's amazing uh, so that just broke my heart a little bit, but okay, we'll go back to Brad Pitt now. No problem. No, I'm sorry we have to leave Dave for a moment. Please go ahead. Yes, I know. We'll, we'll we'll table Dave. We'll sure, back please feel free. Tarantino. <laughs> okay, yeah. so this is tricky. Okay, Mike Fleming is obviously very close with Quentin Tarantino's agent, mm -hmm. Mike Freeman, I believe. This is Mike Fleming out of uh, off a deadline. Yeah. Deadline, yes. Yeah. Very close with Tarantino's agent. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you look back at Quentin's announcements over the years, they usually yeah. come from Fleming. Okay. So Fleming is saying that, you know, he thinks that this is the title role. And it could be, technically. Right. He says, but I think he is, is what right. he says. I think right. he is. Mm -hmm. But none of no one else is confirming that. The, the right. other trades aren't saying that. Um, no, they're saying roles. They're saying role. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's kind. Of, and, and that's what I think is going on here. Like, oh. I feel like this is like. Who who's the lead in Reservoir Dogs to you? Uh, Tim Roth. I agree, but that's probably not the first person who was cast. Right? It was no. Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Right? So Harvey Keitel is the guy. Who once you have him, then everything else falls into place, and you right. get the financing, right? I have a feeling that's what this is. That this is like let's get Brad or let's get 
Leo. I mean, if this is also Quentin's last movie, do we really think like everybody wants to be involved in it? Sure. They'll, they'll sure. even take a small role if it is actually going to be Quentin's last movie because they want to work with the guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I never really thought that Quentin would make this movie like without either Leo or Brad. Okay. Um, you know, and I thought obviously it would be Leo, and I, I still think there's a chance that Leo, you know, does co- you know uh, return and and sure. possibly even reprises his role as Rick Dalton. Yes, the rumors, or at least what Fleming was opi- was uh, opining in his piece, that this could be a continuation of the Cliff Booth character from Once Upon, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That he goes from stuntman to double to eventually becoming a movie critic, um, which is not unheard of. There are many crazy routes to being a movie critic. So uh, there's a possibility that this could be the continuating stories of Cliff Booth. I just don't know if I buy that. Okay. You know, like... You're telling me that Cliff Booth became a movie critic after the events of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Right. But I mean, remember, I know he loves movies. Like he, yeah. you know, he, he has an interest in cinema and all that. But like, I'm just not buying that for that for that. And I'm not, frankly, I'm not buying Brad Pitt as a movie critic either. <laughs> I mean, you don't see him as a studious type, an intelligent type who'd be writing and pontificating, maybe being a little sarcastic, a little. Vicious in I mean, his. Look, I think Brad Pitt's a great actor, Damn right. and he can do anything. You know, I just mm-hmm. like that's not what I had in mind, and I thought okay. that this character was also in their thirties, right? You know, Brad and Leo are obviously too old for that. Yeah, they're in their fifties. Yeah. Um. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if this, if 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 Fleming is right, yeah, or was it just kind of like kind of rushed up there a little bit. I don't know if he, if, if someone else was, was chasing it or, or something like that. Mm. And because part of me thinks it could still be the name that we've heard all along, which is Paul Walter Hauser mm. um, or, or, or somebody else. And, and it, and because you know, I'm, I'm looking at like comments on deadline too. Sometimes the deadline comments are there to be ignored. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And every now and then there's a glimmer of truth, a nugget, a kernel of information. And I don't know, looking at them, they, they're kind of like, the movie critic is maybe the least interesting character in mm. this, in whatever he's putting together, right? Yeah. Be- uh, and he sort of serves as the window through, you know, as window into the actual movie, right? You know, right. Uh, ev- everything else that Quentin wants to do, and we know that he wants to recreate some famous film scenes and that kind of stuff. I think the the real thing here that's just throwing me, me off, yeah, is that is the the line. It's it's a little Flemingism, mm. where he's like. I've heard that there have been rewrites. Ah, yes. Right? You remember that line? Yes, it's yes. So I'm wondering if they're like, hey, you know, we like, you know, again, I don't know who's financing this. Like he says, you know, he says he talked about Sony. I think Sony's um, the odds on favorite at this point. Right, exactly. And, and I don't know if Sony in that uh, the deal with um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if that allowed him to maintain some ownership or retain partial oh, owner, uh, maybe ownership. Cause I remember that was part of the deal when he was shopping like that project around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was looking for, for something like that or that, or that it like reverted to him after 20 years. Right. right something right. like that. The rights or whatever. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of top directors are sort of going for. Uh, and we're going to talk about that later when, when the 20 years later stuff comes up, yeah, but yeah. like, so it's like, okay, if we don't know who, who's technically financing this, is it, is it like the Israeli money? That that mm. had been rumored that you know um, either his, his wife is is very well off or or she knew uh, people in Israel who she could connect him to, right. um, and it could just be independent Israeli financing. Do they want to see a Brad Pitt or a Leo DiCaprio in the lead? Is that what it is? Did he rewrite and age up the character mm-hmm. since yeah. you know last year when we started hearing these these rumors, or is it just a case of like crossed wires and Pitt is in the movie but not as the lead? You have some really great speculation because, yeah, Mike Fleming said that he felt that since May of last year, Tarantino went back and did some rewriting. And you you go like, well, why does Tarantino need to cast anybody to get financing? It's Tarantino. He is the guy you can now give financing to. You don't have to worry about who he casts. But what you said makes sense. And I tell this and I make this connection to wrestling, right? Pro wrestling. They have a show now for the last few years in Saudi Arabia. And they pay these wrestlers who have retired or who are at the end of their string like $5 million to come wrestle one match just because the person in charge of it knows that people love this person. They rarely get to see it. So let's bring them in. 
Same thing with soccer now going on. This league in Saudi Arabia is trying to blow itself up. It's signing players that are near the end of their prime, paying them outrageous wages just to promote it. Same situation possibly here. Hey, we'll give you the money, but you've got to give me a star attached to this film that's going to guarantee that it makes money. So that is a possibility. And so Tarantino goes, well, I can get the money this way. I honor and respect that. I'll go and uh, redo and change it. Because remember, it's based on, as Fleming points out, it ba it's based on the second movie critic of a porn mag that he remembers reading when he was a younger man. So it's not going to be necessarily this like highfalutin intellectual Pauline Kael type. It's going to be somewhat a bit more skeezier or skeevier, you might say, and maybe Pitt with a little bit of, you know, uh, makeup and what have you could look a certain way for what he wants it to be in the movie. But I, I hear you. Variety is still repeating the Pauline Kale thing and saying, you know, that, that this yeah. is inspired by Pauline Kale. Here's the thing, though. Here's the fallacy about Quentin. Yeah. And I, and I love him, obviously. He's yeah, yeah. we both do, yes. He's my favorite filmmaker. Fair enough. He actually is not a Christopher Nolan where you can just slap his name on something. Okay. And it, and it and it hits. Okay. That is why you look at Inglorious Bastards, you look at Django, you look at Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, those yeah. are movies with huge stars and those sure. are his and those are his hits. Mm -hmm. You look at Hateful Eight and Death Proof and Jackie Brown, yeah, not hits. Right. Okay. So, it's really a matter of does he want to go out with a huge hit because if he does, he probably is going to need an A-list movie star or two. Right. Um, you know, uh, that still doesn't mean that those guys are necessarily the lead. Okay. You know, do you think it could be an older cliff booth looking back or telling the story of this guy as a, like a, a way into the movie, like his experiences with this guy, like he did in the, once upon a time in Hollywood, he told a couple of stories that were like flashbacks. Do you think that could be maybe a? I have no idea. I mean, I'm not going to speculate okay. as to like what Quentin is writing or whatever. I'm just trying okay. to explain the, the like how we go from Paul Walter Hauser rumors to Brad Pitt, right? And right. did something change in terms of the circumstance, in terms of you know the. The, the, like the financing or whatever. I mean, it's not like, you know, Paul, Paul Walter Hauser wouldn't drop everything to be the lead in, in this movie. You know, it, right, it, right. it wouldn't be, um, I mean, even the scheduling stuff is odd because obviously Tarantino seemed like he was ready to make this last year. Yes. And now he may be waiting until the end of this year. Now was the delay due to write, like, was it due to the strikes? Was it because the writing he want, you know, he wanted to rewrite. Yeah. Is it that Pitt is busy on this car? You know, the F1 movie until almost mm -hmm. through the end of the year. Like, I mean, he, he's, yeah. he's very busy with that project. So that if, you know, if he is the lead, this really couldn't go until the very end of the year or even early next. I don't Yeah. 2020. And when people are throwing out July, 2025 release dates, that seems really ambitious to me. I can't imagine this would be out before the end of the, the year, before the end of 2025. Okay. You look at Brad Pitt. Right, what's he at? 50, 60. Brad Pitt is 60 years old. And that's the thing. If this movie's set in 1977 Ooh. and Brad Pitt's your lead character, what, your lead Ooh. character was born in 1917? Yeah, that can't that make no sense. That don't make 1917. Yeah, that doesn't yeah, make like, sense. What? Oh, interesting. Okay, all right. I'm always surprised when I find out that he's 60. I mean, because obviously he doesn't look it. And whereas DiCaprio's 49, interesting. Okay. But where is the Paul Walter Hauser stuff? Was that something that you kind of speculated on? Is is this from someone really credible? Is this someone no, like? Mike? I mean, I'd, I'd, you know, is it he... was it was out there in the wind, you okay, know, making okay. the agency rounds last gotcha. year or whatever. Um, okay. But again, the rewrite the rewrite line in Fleming story is what really throws me off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know that he'd yep. heard he was rewriting it quite a bit. That's okay. it, that you know maybe there's just. Maybe it's just very different than than what we'd heard about last year. Okay, uh, Liam Morrissey says he changed July twenty five to Christmas twenty twenty five. Jeff on his tweet is that Fleming or the deadline tweet? Maybe changed. I don't even know which tweet Liam Morrissey is talking about. I think okay. it was like maybe Empire City Box Office or something like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, Liam, feel free to tell us who you're talking about. 
Yeah, people like Brad can play younger. Of course, he can play younger. Yeah, not thirty years, years younger though. I mean, that's a different situation for God's sakes, man. Right? Is is he the critics' editor? Is he? Right. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea. I can um, see that Brad Pitt with like the disheveled tie and the fucking. I just can't see hair. Brad Pitt as a movie critic, and maybe they ugly him up. I mean, uh, yeah. to me, he's just better as a supporting actor. Put some weight on. Hmm? Maybe. Possible. Yeah, for a Tarantino film, he's he's a movie star. Yes, he's a character actor in a movie star's body, but he's still a movie star. And pretty much the leads of almost all of his films, except for maybe once in a while time in Hollywood, have been pretty much character actors, right? Like Roth and Keitel. Um, even, even uh, you know, uh, Bruce Willis, Travolta, they were kind of, they went into the character route uh, for Pulp Fiction and what have you, so. Yeah, be interesting to see what we got here in, in the long run here. Any other news on this one? Any other things you're hearing in the wind about this one? Any other people, like any female leads, any female actresses? No, I'll honestly, see. this took me by surprise a little bit. Like mm. this an announcement, he, I mean, Fleming just dropped it like a bomb. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I know how connected he is to the Tarantino camp. So right, it's like, right. I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, that's, you know, this is all bullshit. And, and, and he's not <laughs> playing the lead because yeah. Mike has really good sources in, in, in QT's camp. But mm. yeah, there's just something about it that, that okay. makes me think that this is not the lead. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I guess I can't say more on that then. I'll just leave it, leave it be. Uh, let's, and if you guys have some uh, speculations and suggestions about what you think this is all about, let us know in the comments section or send in a stream live and super chats. We're doing it live. Let's move on from this story to another story that broke here uh, today. Uh, Jeff, I get your thoughts on this. Tim Burton is apparently in talks to direct or is going to direct rather a Jillian Flynn scripted remake of attack of the 50 foot woman. Uh, and this is for Warner brothers. And, th and this is just, just before we're about to get to another story that's also connected here. Um, but this is under the auspices of Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi. Uh, it's a reimagining of the 1958 Warner Brothers movie classic. Um, Allison Hayes is the lead. That's the lead character's name in this one. She is a wealthy heiress who's, heiress who's close encounter with an alien triggers her to grow into a giant, complicating her marriage, which is already in turmoil. No thanks to her philandering husband. So this was a... This, I remember watching this movie the first time when I was a kid. I didn't get it. And it wasn't until I was a teenager and watched it again. I was like, oh, this is a a commentary on gender dy dynamics, gender politics, and certainly coming on the heels of, of uh, Barbie making a billion dollars. Do you see them thinking that maybe this is the, this is the right time to do a movie like this? And you get a director like Tim Burton who understands how to tell the horror or the terror or something like this combined with some tongue-in-cheek dark humor. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this? And Gillian Flynn being a fantastic writer with Gone Girl, Sharp Objects, and, of course, at EW before that. So what are your thoughts here? I like it. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it could be interesting. I think a lot of it is depending on the casting, sure. And, you know who right. who they who they get to play the title character, but the technology is certainly there to make the you know it, it, it's a good title worthy of being updated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a it's also like a fun B movie. Like you don't yeah. need to spend a hundred million dollars on this necessarily. I mean, with Tim Burton, it's it's not going to be cheap, but um. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like this as like the reverse Ant Man, and obviously Ant Man we see grow to huge sizes uh, as well. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah you you could have fun playing with perspective, and it could be uh, you know a movie about um, modern feminism or you know whatever. Right. Well, he's dating Monica Bellucci. He likes to put his women, his uh, girlfriends or dates or wives in his movies. Helena Bonham Carter, Lisa Marie. Do you imagine Monica Bellucci? would maybe be the lead in this or have a role in this and, or who would you want to see be a lead for something like no, this? No, no, no. <laughs> um, who should be the lead? I mean, I gotta, I mean, obviously if, if they could get Taylor Swift, I saw somebody what? throw that one out there. <laughs> Imagine that. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be um, oh, Aubrey Plaza. I guess Aubrey Plaza could work, but I don't know. I don't know if Aubrey Plaza is the right choice. Um, ironically, Margot Robbie would have been a perfect choice. Uh, for yeah, but yeah, I don't think you can do that. I mean, yeah. we're basically just talking about like the opening of uh, yeah, uh, of yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know, it's it's a tough one, yeah. Uh, Jenna Ortega, 
she's too young, isn't she, to play a wife dealing with a philandering husband? It seems you go a little bit older with that. I mean, Hathaway's a nice suggestion. Some, oh, Sydney Sweeney. That could be possibility. Zendaya, uh, maybe. She's a little bit young as well. Um, Alice Eve, no way. You got to sell the film. Uh, and Alice Eve is known, but not that. I way. bet. I'm sure Warner Brothers would love to get back in business with Zendaya. Yeah, right. It's just Zendaya. a matter of whether, you know, Tim Burton is, is your cup of tea or not. Right, right. Because this is like, this is, again, the guy who did Ed Wood is basically now making an Ed Wood movie. Not that Ed yeah. Wood directed that film, but it's, you know, kind of very much in the same. It's in the vein. Same. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. I like this as the next uh, decision. <laughs> for him, so I'm a big fan of it. Um, all right. So we'll move on to another thing uh, connected to uh, Tim Burton here. Beetlejuice announced its sequel. It gets uh, uh, its official title for the sequel. It is still set for a post Labor Day theatrical release on September 6th. Um, but it is now called Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, um, according to some outlets. And then Deadline has it still as Beetlejuice Beetlejuice 2024 AD. Jeff, what's the actual title of this film? And do you even like it? I, I saw your tweet, Roka. It was I took hilarious. it down. I took it down. Yeah, it was hilarious. The movie is not called <laughs> Beetlejuice Beetlejuice 2024 AD. Let me bring you up the Deadline article that has all of that in italics. And when you see a thing in italics, that is the title. Well, if Deadline reported it that way. Uh, look, I'm going to show you a common sense. Use your eyeballs and look at the poster, John. It, it has 2024 AD on the poster. Look, is that italics? Am I fucking crazy? That's italics. It's uh, such a bitch. Where's the damn who, 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 What's the byline on this? It says 24, 24 AD right on the motherfucking... Uh, Does that look like it's the title, John, or a date? I don't know what it is because it's Beetlejuice and it's quirky and it's weird and it's different. So I created space in my mind. So because it gives you the date here, why would it say 2024 AD when the date is right fucking here? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway. Do we, even the version of the title, do you like it? It's the title. I do. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. I, I do. I kind of do like that. It's it's a clever, you know, nod. Yeah. Um, it's better than better than just Beetlejuice two. I I don't understand. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I, I say I guess. Do you I, want two Beetle, two Juice? I don't think. <laughs> Bj two. I don't see the logic in. In not just calling it Beetlejuice 2. I, we all know it's a sequel. We all know it's the next one. Um, but I guess Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is fine. Be Beetlejuice. I like Jay Scoots with the Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice would have worked. Um, but yeah, I, I like it as well as, as the title, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. But the 2024 AD is what threw me off. Because I'm like, why would you even do that? Is that something weird? I think that movie's going to do well. You do? Okay. Yeah, I do. Electric Be Beetlejuice. There I mean, go. I know there hasn't been a Beetlejuice movie since the late 80s, but like that <laughs> character, you could still go to Universal Studios and see that character. He's endured. Yes. Yes. I've, I've had, I knew three people who played Beetlejuice when I was at Universal Studios, uh, employed there for a couple of years. They were great. One guy had been doing it for 25 years. 25 years, Jeff, playing Beetlejuice. That tells you how long it's endured. Uh, he was able to put three of his kids through college playing Beetlejuice full time. Uh, at Universal Studios, so don't what it, does that do a number on his vocal cords? Like, <laughs> did he ever? Did he have a hard time dropping the voice? Like when when his shift was over? No, he always spoke underneath like this. He always spoke kind of low key like this. But then when he was doing Beetlejuice, it was all energy all the time. And this was a guy when I saw him doing it. It was in his late. It was in his fifties. So you know that's a, that's that's a lot of energy in that character. So respect to him. He was really good at it. Um, all right. Well, so okay, so Beetle Juice, Beetle Juice, we move on from the title. <laughs> move on from that shit. Uh, let's see what else have I got here. It's a quick story before we go to a break here. Uh, anything uh, interesting? Oh, yeah. Do you want to get into your Fast and the Furious now or do you want to wait a little bit on that one? Let's wait until after the break. Let's okay. have you make your little announcement, John. I'm very proud of John. I'm not I'm gonna listen oh. more in this segment. Ooh, okay? okay. I'm gonna listen. We're gonna let John talk, but John story. told me something today that uh, I was very oh. proud of him for. So oh. why don't you why don't you share it? Look, this is first of all, I don't need you to be proud of this. So I want to make that very, very clear. You know, but I, I appreciate your words, but like I say, I do things in my own time. I have I my own. You make up your own opinion. I make up my own, own opinion. Your own mind. Yeah, I'm not a sheep. 
I don't get pushed to do one thing or another. I get mad when people try to force me to do one thing or another. I'm not built that way. It's just how I am. But yeah, for quite some time, Jeff has been uh, a person who has not been the biggest fan of me being part of what was once the Hollywood Critics Association. It is now the Hollywood Creative Alliance. Uh, and this week, um, in response to some of the accusations from the Critics' Choice Organization, they um, the HGA people filed a lawsuit against the Critics' Choice Organization. Now, for me, I had no idea this was happening. I had no idea it was actually going down. Uh, I am on the advisory board, uh, and I thought I would be consulted on something like this, at least be made aware of it. Now, to be fair to the gentleman who runs HGA, uh, it, he, made it, he made it very clear that it wasn't in the bylaws, and he was right. It wasn't in the bylaws. He did not have to do that. But for me, as I sat with that and read the article, um, I just kind of felt this feeling inside of myself that it was time to step away. So I did resign from the HCA earlier this week. Um, it was a hard decision. I really like a lot of the people there. I believe in the mission of the or the mission statement of the organization, but I didn't join a critics organization to go into a holy war with another critics organization. Uh, I just want to be part of organizations that watch movies, we get together, talk about them. Yes, vote for awards, but it should be positive. And so to see it devolving into something like this for me, it just didn't make me feel comfortable. So I uh, sadly had to follow my heart and my compass and step down and resign from the HCA, uh, which was, as I said, a very difficult thing to do. And I, I, I respect that. Um, you know, I, I listen, I think it's shitty what CCA did. I think it CCA should not have flexed its might and said, oh, you want to be in this organization? Well, we're the better organization. You have to leave the other one. I think that's a shitty move on CCA's part. All right, fair. But your tweet was out of line. And I'm going to tell you that straight up live on okay. the air. You calling a bunch of critics who live and breathe by their access to these movies and being able to pay their bills sometimes or survive in this town spineless, I thought was a step too far because you've never been in that position. You don't know what it's like to have your life threatened. And you right now are begging people to sign up for your newsletter so you can put food on the table. So you have to, I would have appreciated you being a little more considerate to people's livelihoods. Their, their livelihood has absolutely nothing to do with these organizations, John. You don't nothing. Know because having access to these movies through these organizations allows them to talk about it, get views, get clicks, get likes, what have you, which allows them to get money off ads. And so that's, there's a difference. You've never lived the YouTube life You've lived the website life, but you've never lived the YouTube life. And so to me, I'm telling what, you. What does that have to do with getting act? I don't understand. You know, why do you call them spineless, like a generalization? It's, some people are just afraid of their livelihoods being threatened. Well, how is there? But John, explain how the livelihood is threatened. I've just I, told you. Because some of these critics get access to these uh, screeners because of their connection to Critics' Choice. Do you know, I have I was I was talking to some publicists down here in San Diego. They told me that walking away from the HCA is, 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 is could be dangerous for me because if I don't get into another organization, the studios are already telling these publicists which critics in every city that are allowed to go to these screenings and they have to be part of certain organizations in order to be allowed to go. So these people having their lives threatened possibly could risk them going to these screenings which means they won't get early access. The, the, this literally mm -hmm. illuminates the whole thing, John. Mm -hmm. it, it, we Studios yeah. should be inviting critics to come to cover their movies, not, not inviting critics because they're in a critics organization. That's and they fair. hope that 12 months from now, we can maybe get considered for an award. So the whole thing, the whole thing is corrupt. The whole oh, enterprise. I agree with you. That we should all be allowed to. These go. people are spineless because they could have said, you know what? Like Scott created this group. It's given me space. Like, you know, I, I have no, I haven't done anything wrong. He hasn't done anything wrong to me. Yep. And I'm sorry, CCA. I'm not just going to drop out because you told me to. Mm -hmm. That's spineless. That's Show a fucking backbone. I tell you what, I'm not going to reveal one of the critics that I know, but I know that that critic's editor made it very clear that that critic had to leave or else they were going to be in trouble and their job was on the line that th so, that editor should that editor should be fired i agree and i thought that editor should be fired for quite some time now like, uh, that editor oh. that editor 
should have been fired for quite some time now, Jeff. Do you, but like, okay, quick. going back, going back, forget yeah. my tweet, John, going back to everything. Fine. Okay. The reason, like you told me, I got into this because this was a group that celebrated a love of movies. Yes. And now it, all it of a sudden it's a group that's color. suing another group. And that's because of money. Money yes. fucks it all up. Money, it takes a pure intention. Okay, yeah. we want to start a group for and, and make it more inclusive for critics. Well, now there's an award show and now there's tables to sell and the money corrupts all. Okay, yeah. criticism is supposed to be pure and not influenced by monetary things. Mm -hmm. So that is why you did the right thing in removing yourself because the whole situation, whether it's HCA, CCA, editors saying you need to be a part of it, publicists saying you need to pick, pick one. I'm not in anything. I still get invites because I cover the movies. That's who should right. be invited to these things, not people who have three letters after their name as part of an organization, okay? Okay. The whole thing is fucking backwards, and you are participating in it, and I'm glad that you're not anymore. And maybe you end up joining another group down the line. That's your prerogative. I want to. I'm I telling do. you that the whole, the whole fucking critics and groups and organizations, the whole thing is fucking sour and rancid and ugly. Yeah, I need to know why you feel this way. Like, what, what do you think every critic should just be allowed to go and get screenings for a movie? Don't you think there should be some matter of vetting which critics are allowed to come in and not like you can't just start a YouTube with 25 subscribers and go, you know what? I'm a critic now. I've always th that's <laughs> what's happening now, John. What are you talking about? That's no. what all these people did. They just started YouTube channels and said, I'm a critic. And then they eventually applied to the CCA and the CCA or the HCA, excuse me. And the HCA is so desperate for members. They're just like, yeah, you, 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 you're the, you're not getting into CCA because no one knows who you are because you just started your YouTube channel. Come on in, be with us. But not everybody, you know, it took me three attempts to get in the HCA. It was not an easy situation. It, they're not just taking everybody. There is a vetting process. There is a where's your, what are your what are your reviews how long have you been doing the reviews where do they appear how do they uh, how are they seen what are the number of uh, of views or likes or clicks on your reviews there is a vetting process this isn't a fucking free for this isn't a state college for fuck's sake there is a vetting process to me the role of a critic is not to be basically just existing to give awards at the end of the year. So, so tell me what's the difference between a critic in the Academy who's giving out an Oscar and if you, if you, a baseline generalization of your words, right? To you, the purpose of a critic is not to be in any organization to give out awards. Don't, but you would say it's okay that there are people giving out awards at the Oscars who you might not be able to, who might not be able to tell you what an actually it's, it's, good it's not is. even the giving of awards okay because the detroit online critics society and the atlanta film critics mm -hmm. all these places they give awards too what they yes. don't have is two giant ceremonies with television deals with banquets and and getting this that's all about vanity that's all about we want to be on television we want to take our selfies with the the celebrities we want to make money by, by selling these tables and all this stuff, and that is how it gets corrupt. So if it was just about giving awards, you would get together, do a vote, and send out a press release. But it's about more than that. It's about a business, and that is why Scott hasn't stepped down himself or resigned himself for the health of his own organization because it is about making money. I I don't know. I'm not privy to any of that. I've never been privy to any of that, so I don't J Jade know. Michael in the chat, stop fucking saying Grace Randolph is the devil. Just stop it. Here. I'm done. We've we've seen the comment. Thank you. You think Grace is the devil? Fine. No more comments. I'm gonna put him in timeout for a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, I've never been privy to that. I've been very well well aware of Scott's financial situation as he's explained it to me. So I understand I don't see this luxurious money you're talking about that everyone is living off high on the hawk. And I and if I, I think I would encourage you to sit down with Scott, have him talk to you, have him go through. And see what you think after that conversation. Because you can't deny that you've also been influenced by people who have an axe to grind about Scott. So don't, you know, you want to start admitting shit. Let's start admitting shit. You've been influenced by certain people who have opinions that are negative from their experiences with Scott that might have colored your opinion. So let's be real. Now, I am the, the most accessible man in the world. 
Yes. Okay. And and if anyone wants to come to Scott's defense and tell me all the great things about Scott and, to, and what Scott does, you have my email address. You have my Twitter. You can sure. DM me, all that stuff. Sure. I Scott was great to me. And I'll tell you that. my. And, own and this isn't even about him personally. Yeah. This is about I, the organization. Fair. 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 Okay. I tell you, many of the and, people... and I'm not limiting it to HCA, right? This is right. how I feel about all the organizations. But you're not going in on CCA and you're not going in on these other organizations who you have friends in those organizations, high up in those organizations. You're I don't even know who you're talking about, and I don't. I would fucking tell them that you're you're the closest. I don't like you're the the closest friend I have, like out of a uh, in this space. So it's not like I'm it's not me. saying something <laughs> to like you know spare someone's feelings. I, you know, your face. Yes, I, 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 I think jo Joey Berlin's been perpetuating the same scam for a long, long time. Well. I'm not saying anything about that. I, we, we listen. We can move on because I, I did want to basically just give you credit for your decision, which you came to on your own. Yes. Um. And yeah, you know. Uh, I, I hear your point. It, it's it's a matter, of, but I always I just want to make it clear. I always saw the ceremony as a way of celebrating these movies, celebrating these people. I never saw it as let me take as many selfies tonight as I can. It was never like that for me. It was about seeing some of my fellow critics who I rarely get to see in person. Because a lot of people flew in and getting to meet them. And then later, if there's any celebrities there at after parties, having wonderful conversations. I had a great conversation with Giancarlo Esposito that will go into my into my memory bank forever. Just a regular, relaxed, really nice conversation with him for 20 minutes. Cheryl Lee Ralph was a phenomenal conversation for 10 minutes. Like These are things that you just happen to have access to. I'm not denying that there aren't some critics who maybe go after it to for the status of publicity, take multiple pictures to elevate themselves, to make them seem, seem more important than they actually are. I hate those critics. I don't like to be around those people. So, but I but I think there's a balance and you're trying to generalize and I think it's much more nuanced than you think is, all, is my overall general point at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. That's just one of the same. Um, all right. So let's take a break. We're at 40 minutes. I thought that was going to be a quick one, but it went a little farther than I thought. Um, all right, let's take a quick break. And on the other side, we're going to we'll answer some of your stream live super chats and get in some other stories right after this. What one final it? thought, John. One final thought. <laughs> okay. Right. I, I, I was, I, I, it, it blanked. All right, sure, um, sure. I think it would, I think what we're getting at is we obviously see things through different eyes. And I yes, think, yes, yes. I think obviously if you're in that organization, like, of course, it's all very innocent. And yeah, we're just here to, to give out some awards and, you know, have, have a meal, um, you know, and, and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's why I'm a reporter. OK, right, because I, right, I, I am right. trained to look at these things through. Yeah, here, here's everybody having a good time. And like, why rock the boat? You know, it's a party. Just, you know, be cool. But the reason that people are there, I mean, they're all jockeying for something. Everybody in this room wants something. And it's my job as a reporter to figure out what does this person want and what is this sure. person's motivation for being here and all that. And that's it. We can drop We can drop. It. No, no, I think that's a fair. I totally respect that. But the reason we do the show is because. I have somewhat of a reporter instinct, but I don't have the experience and the desire and the drive to do it like you do, Jeff, which I always respect and admire, but I'm never afraid to confront this stuff. I too question a lot, which I think is what makes the show work so well. Um, I had this question from somebody that came through and I cannot look at it up. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, Baloney had accounts that were chilling, Roca. That's the unfortunate thing. I don't know what that means. Bellany had accounts that yeah. were chilling Roca. What does that mean? So if you can uh, elaborate on that, Ali, aloha. Let me know what you mean by that. I would appreciate it. So I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let's get into We've got only five Super Chats. Come on, guys. 600 of you hanging out with us. Send in some love here. Send in some Streamlabs and Super Chats as we go along. We just gave you a nice sample of what the hot mic uh, can be about. Andy Sewell says, any thoughts on the THR charts that the Hollywood Reporter launched? today what is this jeff what is the thr chart? you know i i did see that um and i didn't actually click on it let me i'm now i'm curious hold okay. on thr charts what, what, the hollywood reporter launches thr charts okay let's see and it is the glance resources were updated live at the top streaming series and movies okay so this is just like what they're partnering with yeah nielsen com square parrot 
Oh, okay. What, what do you want from this? You can't. You can't believe any of these numbers. Anyway. <laughs> So it's another data thing. It's I mean that's what the trades yeah. are are selling yeah. now. It's all about data, whether it's VIP, you know, variety VIP plus or the rap pro. It's well, just it's all just data. It's basically yeah, it's basically collating what they see as the um most watched things of the week to maybe give you an idea of what other people are watching so you can either keep up with the Joneses or get inspired to watch something you weren't thinking of watching, but now that you're aware of it, you will watch. So this kind of works out in the studio's favors, to be honest with you, um, uh, in in a lot of ways, because it uh, maybe drives traffic to their online stuff uh, or the stuff in the theater. So, yeah, I mean, every, I every, listen, everyone loves the horse race in Hollywood, whether it's yeah. the Oscars or the box office. And this right. is just another who's on top, who's last, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just to make it clear, beekeeper above the above Mean Girls, just so we're just so we're clear. We have yeah, more mind. breaking news. Oh, okay, yeah. no, it's not, it's not really breaking news. It's about the Harry Potter TV show from Deadline. Deadline understands the shortlist is now down to three names as far yeah. as uh, writers go. They add Francesca Gardner, who's a succession writer, oh, among the nice. finalists. Um, of course, they, they don't know who the other two finalists are <laughs> from, from, the, from the four who they threw out. So they named four last week. Yeah, only two of those are moving on to the next round, and um, along with the succession writer, I still think. I mean, I, I did talk to people about that list. Um, yeah. Michael Leslie is sort of understood to be maybe the best writer on on that list, but also um, maybe skewing a little a little dark. Yeah. I, I think what they wanted, actually, the way it was explained to me, now that I uh, am I'm talking about Harry Potter TV series, yeah, sure. Cause that list was all over the place. Like, yeah. right. Like those four names, they were very different writers. Yeah. And I think the idea was to come up with a few different angles on what a, a Harry Potter show would be and, and present some diversity in, in terms of like the approaches. Um, uh, so yeah, that that's why it was kind of all over the place. Cause they're not quite sure what direction they want to go in uh, yet. Yeah. It's best to explore multiple things. So why not? Yeah, I had gotten a text from a source who told me that about an hour ago that it was down to three people for that role for the role of oh, for what they're going to go with, like what what they wanted to. The writer, do. yeah, 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 the writer. So haunted on. Let's let me read this one. Let me read this one so I can get into this okay. a little bit more. Haunted underscore. Haunted on says Jeff, you're a dying breed. The world would be a better place if reporters at large still valued the tenets of journalism. Godspeed and much love to the both of you and this community. Oh. You know why I wanted to read this on on him? Because it's like, it's little things that have just been driving me up a fucking wall lately. Here we go. Okay? Here we go. Whether it's Deadline doing the court, like, who are these articles for? Are the articles for the fucking publicists at the networks, or are the articles for the fucking readers? Can you okay? elaborate? What, what articles are you talking they, about? They do the, the Corey Hawkins to, to star in The Man in My Basement, uh, oh, based yes. on the Walter Mosley book. Yes. No mention. That he's replacing Jonathan Majors. Yes. Probably because the producers don't want it to anyone to remember that this was a Jonathan Majors project. Right. right. Okay. You've got uh, what was the the variety scoop about the TV show um, uh, that they're doing? No, uh, right. Dark places. Mm. Right. No right. mention of the shitty Charlize Theron movie that came out, you know, seven or eight years ago. Mm. Like, how do you not mention these things? How? And I see it like I understand, like as reporters, yeah, we got to break news sometimes and you have to do things that the sources want. So, you know, add this person and leave this person out, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, you have to maybe make some compromises uh, in order to, to bring the scoop home. But it's also like there are also some requests I get where it's like, I can't do that. I can't write this Christopher Nolan Tenet story, right? IMAX and yeah. pretend that it's just. Just them putting the movie back out in theaters. I'm not even going to mention the fact that uh, Chris isn't at Warner Brothers anymore, and they'd love to have him back. And maybe this opens. Like, how do you how do you make that deal? Yeah, you can't. Okay, you can't. You have to fucking put the readers first, which is what I'm trying to do in the newsletter, and what I just see the trades ignoring all day long. Yeah, it's astounding. Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, you say like I, I take haunted underscore autumn's point. By the way, congratulations on the new avatar picture. I like the new picture, but um, the 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 the, the goatee there. Uh, you say this would be a better place if reporters at large still value the tenets of journalism. I think a lot of them do. The problem is that the companies who employ these reporters yes. don't. 
and they see that people are clicking on these stories to just get the basics and roll the fuck on out of there and not get much more of the backstory and the context for these stories. So if reporters value the tenets of journalism more, um, it, it, sorry, if, this, if the people who employ these reporters value the tenets of journalism more, I think you'd see that more and more. So the problem is not the journalists. The pro journalists are in this and they have to pay bills. They have mortgages, they have kids, they have houses. It's they the have the editors, it's the bosses. The editors, it's the bosses, exactly, exactly. And I bring this back to a few years ago with that situation when a certain somebody said, hey guys, can you all stop criticizing movies in a negative way to the studios? Can you guys do uh, can you guys do uh, stories on Collider Movie Talk that are not negative about studios or actors or directors? Right, it makes because it tougher for me to book Q and A's. Rick, yeah, because it's it, it, yeah, it's tough for me to book Q and A's, or I'm not going to be able to. Or I might lose my connections with, or we, we, not we. It's not about a specific person. We as a company might lose connections to these studios, or directors, or actors, or writers. And I bristled at it. I hated that because that's not truth. That's just about you trying to have a career in this business spewing surface bullshit. And I don't, and I hate that, which is again, the genesis of our show was the frustration that um, people don't or, or can't tell the truth. And, and it's unfortunate uh, because, you know, for whatever reason, they want to stay alive. They want to make the six figures that they make in these, some of these bigger uh, uh, um, news. Uh, you know, I understand though, that like there are circumstances and there's a time and a place mm -hmm. and, you know, you do have to be a company, you have to be a, a team player, which I, you know, always sure. thought I, I was, you know, <laughs> until it was made clear to me that, you know, no, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm not going to fucking blatantly, you know, fuck this source over and, and screw this right. person over first. Like, that's what that's what the bosses want, because it's not their relationships on the line. Or remove a tweet. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, to me, it's just mind boggling. The people who are put into positions of power, whether that's uh, hiring power or what, you know, whatever it is. And, and that's why I really had no sympathy for the people at, at the, simp uh, at, at the messenger. Not that I didn't have sympathy for the, the employees who got totally fucked over. Yes. Uh, and, and like, you know, no severance, like no, you know, no benefits, like, you know, some people are, are out there on, on work trips and they don't even know if they are going to get reimbursed. Like that yeah, shit yeah. is the shit that I just went through and it's the fucking worst. OK, yep, yep. but as far as like there are so many like as far as the outlet and the like the editors, these people are making money hand over fist. Yep. OK, yep. to do nothing original. Yeah. All they did was just fucking rip off other reporters. Yeah. Who were being paid less. Yeah. I mean. Honestly, like, you know, the, the entertainment reporter who I tried to email over and over and over never responded. Mm. She has been at the, the top of the masthead at so many of these major companies. Yeah. I don't know what she does. Has she ever broken a story? Is, is she good at hiring? She doesn't seem to have an eye for talent. Right. Uh, the, you know, the messenger's whole entertainment vertical was a fucking shit show. Who the hell read anything on them? Yeah. So I just have no sympathy when there are plenty of talented people like me and others among us out yeah. here looking to be hired, and you just hire your friends or your, your the people that you know from People Magazine mm -hmm. while you collect a nine hundred thousand thousand dollar salary. Dan Wakeford, unbelievable. Fuck, fuck Jimmy Finkelstein, and uh, I hope that his employees sue him to Kingdom Come. There you go. Uh, that's one of the things that I I talk myself out of doing when the situation happened to me was suing my employer who is a previous owner of that outlet because of stuff that I had endured in that situation. Uh, I never got a severance check, my final severance check at that outlet because I refused to sign the NDA that they tried to make me sign. I gave up $2,000, which at the time was a big deal. Yeah, you need that life. money. I get it. Yeah. I signed the NDA. I needed the money. I took, I took it. I yeah. didn't have, you know, anything bad to say about, you know, I know we're, yeah, we're in different circumstances experience. and you're entitled to those. Yeah, 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 yeah. He kissed your ass. So you didn't have to, but I certainly had a lot to say about it because the experience that I went through and how he let me go like a coward. And I refused to sign it because I was like, no, I, no one's going to shut my mouth about the things right. I want. And, and that you're allowed to say whatever you want as a result. Exactly. exactly. And I've, I've made that 2,000 more than Yes, one. Brandon I never, Joseph, I, I saw the class action lawsuit, yeah. Yeah, and, and I never, I never, I don't think I ever want to work for an outlet again, to be honest with you, because they restrict you. They tell you what you can say. They tell you what you can talk about. They tell you what you can put it. Editors come in and slice out pieces of your of your stuff because they don't want to upset their, you know, the overlords there. And I don't want to do that. I like that I've carved out this little piece 
of independent existence here at this point in my life. Right. Three years, four years now, I've been very lucky. So, right. and that's, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like yeah. I was fine being a cog in the machine, Yeah. but it's like, okay, if we're now, if there are now machines where you work and work and work and you don't even get the money that you earned yeah. and you have people out there just literally stealing yeah, yeah. or using the money that I've earned to pay the staff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck this. I'm out. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm pretty done with bosses as well. Unless I get an offer, I can't refuse or unless Jay Penske comes to his senses and say, do I really want to compete with this guy for the next decade? Let's just give him millions of dollars to go away. Like I did. Nikki <laughs> I'm very open to that. Jay, please. I will go write novels. Could I have just half of that? I'll take a half oh, of it. Yeah. Or, or I can keep being a thorn in your entire company's side. <laughs> I'll just take a half of it. Um, anyway, all right, there you go. That was, that was one question. <laughs> right. um, Christian Jacob says, as a Christian, I love the book of Eli. It's respectful to the Bible and a fun action movie about a futuristic prophet type. Your thoughts? God bless. Yeah, the Denzel Washington one. I loved this uh, film. Uh, Gary Oldman is the villain. Um, Jennifer Beals in this as well. Um, and apparently there's a series coming, right? That they're going to redo this with somebody else? What are your thoughts on book of Eli? Yeah, they're doing the John Boyega prequel series. I, I liked Book of Eli. I didn't, I didn't love it or anything. I mean, I've never seen it again. Um, but, you know, it had some cool stuff. Denzel is Denzel. He's a really good actor. You put him in a like he, he's obviously better than the average lead you get for a movie like that. Right, right, right. Uh, and, and I like the Hughes brothers and, and what they do. They have an interesting visual style. So I, I definitely like that movie, but it's not one that stood out to me. There are certainly many other situations there. That you can play around with the Bible in a and make it, uh, you know, respectable uh, in movies, and maybe that will be making a comeback at some point. Daniel MSB says, Jeff, can you spill some tea about the Dune reactions? Yeah, apparently there were some screenings for Dune for exhibitors and some critics even who got early uh, views of Dune. Anything to say, Jeff? That you are allowed to say? Well, I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't mean I won't. Um, I've, I've been sent. I've heard some Dune reactions. Obviously, I've talked to some people who have seen it. I've been sent some things. I'm not going to share those right now. Um, I'm, I'm not. I, I could. I could be a big baby and throw a tantrum because I was sure. invited to something. And I kind of want threatened to do as much on Twitter, obviously. But, you know, am I going to carry through on that threat? Not really. Um, for at least not today. <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, Warner Brothers, what the fuck? There you go. What the fuck? I have been inside DeLuca's office. I know all your top co comms executives. I know the head of a Blizzard for DC. Like, like, I don't understand what more a guy has to do. Maybe he has to be in the fucking CCA or the HCA to get invites to these fucking early screenings. Maybe you just it's just for junket press. But it's like, listen, if you want to treat me like the other... And like Mr. All Media, who we can invite to the movie 24 hours before, we will see how that goes for you. Okay? Because I do not have a boss you can call. I do not have advertising you can pull. And I have a stack of Dune 2 reactions right now. Wow. So should I run them? Why shouldn't I run them? Give me a good reason. Because it would be an asshole move? Well, you know what? If you want to shut me up, you, you put me under an embargo and show me the fucking movie. Goodbye. There you go. Well said. Goopy G says, with Tarantino retiring and other auteurs getting older, will we start to see a time when filmmakers aren't the draw for theater goers? No, I think there are still plenty of auteur filmmakers. I mean, Ryan Coogler. Um, there's quite a lot, a, a number of them coming up here through the ranks, Jeff, that are getting, um, you know, recognition and affection for their, for their work, wouldn't you say? We start to see a time when filmmakers, I mean, yes. Probably. Okay. Probably, yeah. I mean, it's 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 tough to say. Like, obviously, like someone like Chloe Zhao, uh, Celine Song, you know, like great filmmakers have made some great movies. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to be going to see their movies 20, 30 years from now because it's a Chloe Zhao movie? That's I don't know. that's tough to say. Yeah, I, I, I think that's it's hard. Um, I yeah, I don't think that. I think there's an entire generation of, of filmmakers that, yes, are getting older or aging mm -hmm. out. Um, and I think it'd be hard pressed for this new generation to make names quite as big as the Ridley Scotts and James Camerons of the world. You know what I mean? Well, you've got PTA. You've The Coen brothers are still very much in their prime. These guys are, but they're older. Denise I mean, only done like seven films. 
they're not they're not no 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 Den, yeah Denis is uh is a little bit of a younger guy still somewhat in uh, Aronofsky is still more, still somewhat young Spike Jones still somewhat young right yeah but th this is the, these guys are from another gen they were 90s kids right. so it's like who are we talking about from oh. this crop of people Who's that making we're going to be talking about now. 20 years now no, it's, it's, it's the Peels and the Gerwigs and the Astors mm -hmm. and the Eggerses you know yeah 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 hmm Good point. And the Kugler, right? Kugler would still be. What about Edgar Wright? Would you consider Edgar Wright part of the current crop? Or is he just kind of just barely making the, the cut? Not today, I'm not. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Fair point. Uh, Haimath Ngade says, has Matt Reeves finished writing Batman 2? No. Jeff? I have no fucking idea what's going on with the Batman 2, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I may have to start putting out the feelers for DC and what the mm -hmm. hell is going on up there. Um, well, I mean, okay. So wait, James Gunn said yeah. that basically that, that timeline that he unveiled, like the calendar of everything yeah. fucking put it in a shredder. It's gone. Yes. He yeah. moves stuff up, moves stuff around. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was, and, and we knew that. I mean, I basically, Jamie and I said as much as soon as that shit was revealed, revealed at DC press day where it's like, yeah, this is the plan now, but a year from now, this is not this is not going to be the plan. So, yes, yeah, some movies have moved up on the timeline. Some have moved back. Uh, he he expects to get two other projects in into production this year, right? Okay. Yeah. Besides, yeah, yeah. besides Superman, right? So I think the idea is obviously Supergirl is one of them, right? And then it's you know what is the other one? Um, I would imagine it's Lanterns. Mm. I think yeah, Lanterns yeah, yeah. is probably the furthest along, and I think it's also going to be the most like intensive yeah um it's gonna be pretty expensive like i reported in the newsletter this week guys damon lindelof is a consultant on mm. that um i know there was you know there were reports that he was like run, you know show running or producing it or whatever no i, I don't think that's quite the case but that he is involved um as a consultant yeah. uh yeah i would i would go lanterns over waller i would what about um, okay it, there, what about there, there's one other thing, right? Okay. There's all this speculation though about Supergirl, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. forgive me, everybody, for not knowing that Millie Alcock uh, dies five episodes into the fucking show. I don't watch it. I don't give a shit. It was speculation <laughs> that they may have to share her. Um, <laughs> what if? Yes. If it's not Superman Legacy, which again I think it is. Yeah. But if it's not, what if Supergirl is in Peacemaker season two? Could be interesting. I mean, Millie could go toe to toe with John Cena any day of the week. So that could be a fun way to avoid having the your Superman showing up in Peacemaker, but you have Supergirl showing up, and especially because Peacemaker talks all kinds of shit about Superman. So having the person related to Superman who was kind of sent there to protect Superman could be an interesting back and forth between those two. Yeah, I like that idea. I'm down with that. Actually. Well, I think that they they said they want to find a way to bring Peacemaker into yeah, right? Get the larger that totally to maybe it's via Supergirl. I get it. She didn't die. Okay, she, she aged up. Holy shit, guys. I don't watch the show. I've never seen one fucking second of the House of the Dragon. I don't care about the House of the Dragon. I don't care about Game of Thrones. I don't care about any of this shit. I will tell you who stars in the next show, okay? That's my job, not to watch it. <laughs> Just so we're clear, we're at an hour already. We've still got a bunch more to go. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Save your breath. Jaden says, uh, just sending in support. Love love the show, guys. Thank you, Jaden. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody who's watching. Um, Real quick, Jeff, what about the Batman rumor? It was it was brought up for a couple of days, and it was quickly debunked after a couple of days. Do you think, have you heard anything that he is looking or ha is getting closer to picking a Batman for his DC universe, James Gunn? Is he picking a Batman versus DC Universe, or is the Batman for the DC first? Universe already picked? Oh, interesting. All right. I, I mean, so what? Well, he responded no to a fan, right? It, it said, yeah, yeah. Um, right, will Reeves finish his trilogy yeah. before Batman? I forget what the actual wording of, of the yeah, question yeah, yeah. was, and, and it's probably important. But James Gunn just said no, implying that, no, we could get ba that Batman news sooner. But it's also like, well, what if they just, Scrap that project. Yeah. <laughs> then you yeah. then you won't get it either. <laughs> um, I just why, why, why? You have a successful Batman right now. Yeah. Are yeah. you are like are these people stupid? 
Why would you intentionally confuse the consumer like that? I just don't think Matt Reeves' Batman style fits into what James Gunn wants to do. Then keep him out. Then you got to find a new Batman. Keep, you, 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 then you, but then you put that Batman, you, you start doing that Batman once yeah. Reeves' trilogy is done. I, 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 I agree with don't that. understand. I agree with that. Uh, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with you, Bob. Why the UFC is, is Argyle still worth seeing? I'm a fan of Vaughn. Excited to see Dua Lipa. Also, can we get thoughts on Mr. and Mrs. Smith's show? Do you want to save that for later, the reviews for Argyle and Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Or do you want to do Yeah, that? we can talk about that later in the show. Wiley, we're going to put a pin in it. Thank you. But we will talk about it. We will talk about it. Yes. But uh, meanwhile, I am a good to know Snyder is who we all know he is. He's the Trump of showbiz. Right. Isn't Trump Isn't Trump the Trump of showbiz? Right. What exactly makes me uh, Trump-esque? Not watching he, House he, of the fucking Dragon? He is not the Trump of showbiz. Let me make that clear to you guys. No. He's got an actual heart inside of his chest. Mega no, YouTube, I have no, no heart. Mega YouTube 9 says, Miller's Girl is the highlight of Freeman's career. Yeah, this just opened up at the Angelica, Jeff. Have you seen Miller's Girl? I, I might go see this. I hear good things. Oh, I, I, I used to use scab. It's like the Angelica. That's right. You're in San Diego. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I have not heard good things. No, oh, okay. uh, I will watch this on VOD because it's, you know, my yeah. kind of genre and I like Jenna. Uh, but no, I'm not going to the theaters to, to seek this one out. I have not heard good things. And the highlight of Martin Freeman's career. So. <laughs> <laughs> there. Um, he was right. great on The Office. He was. Sloth says, what are some of the... Uh, oh, already, we already answered that one. Sorry about that. Here we go. Pussy O'Connell. Oh, Jesus. Over Pussy O'Connell? <laughs> that's the name. Over <laughs> under 30% Tatum as... Channing Tatum as Gambit shows up in, in at least as a cameo in Deadpool 3. I think over 30%. This is a great opportunity to see him in the costume. And he appeared in Sean Levy's Free Guy, obviously starring Ryan Reynolds. Thanks. Would love to hear your thoughts. And you mentioned Tatum months ago to be a good Hal Jordan for the Lanterns. Would you pick who would you pick as a younger slash older John Stewart? Maybe Kelvin Harrison Jr. for younger Jeff, your boy Glenn Powell would be a good Jordan as well. LA slash C's. I, I don't know what that means. So, um, yeah, your thoughts here, Jeff. Do you think we finally get Channing Tatum in a gambit outfit, even though that film is never going to happen? I will uh, say I have not heard a peep about it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, well, that remember, actually sounds like a fun cameo. I mean, and he, he has yeah. a good sense of humor about himself and would probably do it. Absolutely. I mean, he was a gimp in fucking This is the End, so yeah. why wouldn't he do it? Um, and do you like Kelvin Harrison, possibly, for a younger Jon Stewart in um, in The Lanterns? I like Kelvin. He's yeah, I do. Uh, actually, I think that a, TV, a, a big TV show might do him some good. Yeah, I agree with that. Patty Perinium says, hey, y'all, with the Supergirl casting, how about Emerald Fennel as the director? I mean, she's an Oscar winner. Any good suggestions, Jeff, or indie or mainstream directors helming this thing? Imagine Catherine Bigelow, Bigelow helming it as her comeback film, One Can Dream. Yeah, I this, this is for which movie? Supergirl. No yeah. way okay. Catherine Bigelow touches it. This is like uh, the lead. Th this is this would be something I would yell at you for if you were my employee. <laughs> yell at me? <laughs> Why? What did I say? No, no, no. No, the commenter I'm saying. Oh, oh okay. The, like, and, and I did yell at my employees back at the tracking board. I, you know, it was a room full of women. And every every time there was a comic book movie that, that had to hire someone, they would just be like, Catherine Bigelow, Catherine Bigelow. I'm like, guys, if Catherine yeah. Bigelow wanted to direct a comic book movie, she would have done it. She's okay? the diehard of comparison. Like, everybody's always defaults to Catherine it's, Bigelow. There are exactly. Other people. It's like, yeah, Catherine Bigelow is a woman. We get it. She's yeah. an action director. We get it. We don't need to think of her for every single action yeah. movie starring a woman. Um, there are others out there, and believe me, if she wanted to do it, she already would be on the project. Has she ever um, directed an action film with a woman in the lead? Um, oh, I guess, what, uh, well, I wouldn't call uh, uh, Zero Dark Thirty uh, an action film. So. No. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, just a lazy, lazy choice. I'm sorry. Yeah. What um, about Emerald Fennel? And Emerald Fennel, have you watched Emerald Fennel's movies? Yeah, has this person seen them? They what about these movies? Like, I yeah. get it. A woman, a talented female director, but yeah. when you're watching these movies, what do you see in them that makes you go four four quadrant supergirl blockbuster movie? <laughs> like, what is it that you're seeing? And that's what I'm getting at. You have to do another layer of thought. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean to come down on whoever uh, this commenter is who probably spent money to to put in this question. I'm yes. sorry. But that's what I'm getting at. Uh, so uh, Supergirl directors, neither of them. And I don't think Emerald Fennel would do it with James Gunn having selected her Supergirl for her. I just don't think that is 
something that Emerald Fennel would be necessarily on board with in judging from what I've seen. Right. Um, now, now, again, pay is a different thing. So like someone like Chloe Zhao, who made beautiful movies, right? Mm -hmm. Those movies didn't make her money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So at some point it's like, shit, if I can make a couple million bucks directing a movie. I'll, I'll take it. I think so you never right. know what the, someone's financial situation is. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. I, I think you, I think you remove, I, I don't think she would go back to do a superhero film. Chloe Zhao. I, I don't think, I think we, we, we no, we, she's not on the list. Don't worry. It's sailed. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin Nichols says, John and Jeff, what do you know about the rumors that Paul Thomas Anderson polished or rewrote killers of the flower moon? Yeah. This has been going around this week, dude, that, uh, rumors are that PTA, uh, did a work did a pass or polished up uh killers of the flower moon have you heard anything about this i mean they are working together him spielberg and scorsese for tcm kind of selecting the movie so it would kind of maybe fall within the realms of logic on this one no comment oh ho, ho! see the donald trump of of the movie sphere would not be quiet. He would just reveal it. So the fact that he doesn't reveal it tells you that he's not. I think, listen, there's a lot of things you hear. There are things that get denied. At the end of the day, the only one who knows who's sitting in front of the keyboard typing is this little fucking camera right here. That's true. That's true. And the government. The government always knows. Um, let's see. Fantastic says, uh, the hot mic is real as fuck. Thank you both. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> Any Star Wars news? <laughs> uh, no, no Star Wars news. No Star Wars news. Oh, no first rate, first rate, Nate. Thank you so much. Oh, how very kind. He said, "Here's to being your own boss, brothers." Oh, thank you, first rate. That's very kind of you. Uh, and uh, Mega YouTube says, "Jeff, can you bring up the Jacob Savage article about critics on Tablet.com? You mentioned it on X. I read it. I couldn't send this as a super chat for some reason. So, yeah, what?" I did. I did read that piece. Okay. 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 Uh, and Jeff, any word on the Skydance animation film Spellbound that John Lasseter is behind with a big cast? I thought it was supposed to come out last year. Haven't heard anything since. Uh, Jeff, didn't it? No, it got um. Didn't isn't it at Netflix? Yeah, I thought it was in Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it just moved to Netflix. Okay. And they uh, had a bunch of they had like Leo and the Mona last year, so I think it's just a matter of uh, you know crowded. Yeah. Um, I bet it'll be out this year. Let's uh, let's hit a couple more, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll hit some more stories and then swing back to these uh, Francisco. Hey guys, are you going to do the re Oscar awards again on the, on Tuesdays? I really enjoyed you guys doing that. I mean, I, I Jeff, a lot of people loved us doing it. It was great. And credit to Jeff who got the idea from the rewatchables. Um, your thoughts. Uh, I'm sure we can revisit certain years, right? Are you telling them that I'm stealing the idea from the rewatchables? You mentioned it on the show, Jeff. You said they were doing this on the rewatchables. It gave me an idea. You said it's, it. It's true. I, I, I straight up stole it. I'm sure that they'll have more listeners, but uh, I st straight up stole the idea from Sean Fennessy. And if he has a problem with that, he knows where to find me. <laughs> um, uh, I'm down to do the re-Oscars again. I, I thought it was just interesting because obviously 99 is such a huge year and we are now at the 25-year anniversary of that. So so prepare for a whole year full of oral histories and lookbacks yeah, yeah. and all kinds of pieces. So I just wanted to sort of get out in, in front of it. Um, but I'm down to do more if you want. Yeah, those are fun. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, Richard on Inspiration said, dreams do come true. Let's figure out how. I love it, Richard. You're right. 100 on score. For all my railing against the current media journalism landscape, I respect the hustle for hush money hashtag pay this man yeah pay Jeff yes Jones. yeah yes uh, guys subscribe to the newsletter by the way if you're not i know uh i know you've all gifted me with your, your time here and every week coming to this channel and, and watching and uh you know doing the, this the stream lab chats stream yard chats all that stuff so uh yeah. but save a little save a little left in the till for a monthly subscription not too much because still keep donating here because i don't get any of that newsletter Mitch Jensen says, why in the holy mother F is Chris Rock involved in remaking a terrific Ford film like another round for U.S. audiences? I think you tweeted about this, Jeff. Remember what Bong Joon-ho said at the Oscars a couple of years ago? Yeesh, Hollywood is lazy. I agree. I mean, Chris Rock, not a noted filmmaker. He's going to take on and give you the American version of an incredibly um, interesting and nuanced and layered film like this with Mads Mikkelsen. Do you think this will work? I don't think this will ever be made. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I mean, okay. The, a man called uh, uh, Uva, which is, became a man called Otto, right? Yeah, right. Tom Hanks. That was like the exception. But it's so often, we, yeah. what was that movie that um, Jack Nicholson was going to do with Kristen Wiig? 
I'm, I'm blank. It was at Paramount. I don't remember. Um, it was uh, Ch- Lisa Cholodenko was going to do it, but okay. it's like there, there, there are always these foreign films that get you know that they announce an English language remake. Yeah, but like Parasite. It, it very rarely, exactly, comes to fruition. Yeah. Another round is so specifically like Danish or, or yeah. European at the very least. Like yeah. I just don't see how that translates to American. And maybe Chris Rock has a take. Um, maybe Chris Rock is just bored. I mean, but like, I don't even know why you sign on to this. If you're so, if you're like gung ho on the Martin Luther King thing. Yeah. There's another yeah. thing I'm skeptical will ever happen either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, like Todd, Chris Rock, you can make your, your comedy movies, but I don't know. Are we really going to invest in a Chris Rock directed MLK movie? And yeah, it seems weird. And not like another round. Is, is this commercial? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a quick break because we're over uh, half an hour on this one and uh, we'll come back and hit some stories uh, and then we'll hit your final Streamlabs Super Chats on the way out. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. Someone's saying Will Smith should be cast in the Another Round <laughs> remake <laughs> directed by Chris Martin. I'll tell you what Will Smith should do. No joke. You want to sure. know? Sure. Here we go. Yes. Even though I think I said that the movie is going to be smaller and it doesn't have a director yet. And I do think directors should be in charge of casting movies. And I don't know what the script is like and don't know if there's a lead for an older black man in this movie. Yeah. But if I'm Will Smith, I go back to the fucking shit that made me a fucking movie star and made this goddamn country fall in love with me. And I fight a bunch of fucking dinosaurs in Jurassic World. Wow. That's what I would do if I'm Will Smith. I go to Steven Spielberg and I say, Steven, I fucked up at the Oscars. Please get me back into fucking July 4th movie theaters and mm. let's fucking kick some dinosaurs. I have that is that is not even a rumor, guys. That is just my idea. I'm not hearing anything about Will Smith and Jurassic Park. Do you know who could direct that one? Are you allowed to say yet? <laughs> uh, that 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 did not pan out and and oh, um okay. Uh, it's been a, it's been an interesting week on that front. Oh, I'd love to hear that. All right, well, I'll tell you off there. Uh, yeah, I like that. Okay, okay, let's move on to Netflix here, dude. Netflix. Um, uh, they were having a, the head of next week's the semi-annual TCA Association press tour. Netflix stayed its own press event yesterday, which was dubbed "Next on Netflix." Uh, at no a- invite here. No <laughs> yeah. invite. I thought it was a who's who. Um, a to do theater in Hollywood. Content chief Bella Bajaria. Uh, and her uh, lieutenants and uh, VP nonfiction, uh, VP of nonfiction, Brandon Reek, and VP of Latin America, Paco Ramos were there, and they previewed a bunch of stuff here. But they addressed some issues with Netflix. She said Vince McMahon is gone when she was about, asked about the WWE scandal uh, and said that he's gone, he's not there, he's gone. That's fine, but a lot of people who might have known about this are still there. So I found that to be a really political answer. She went in about Mega uh, uh, Markle and uh, and Prince Harry, the stuff they were working on. She mentioned though, Jeff, the mothership may have just been bad. She says that everybody on both sides, the talent and us, all agreed that it was better not to launch it. Halle Berry had an interesting tweet after your news broke there that was uh, very clearly saying, "Don't put your value in what other people think you are valuable for." kind of implying that she didn't want this thing to go down, but other people felt it was terrible. But the big thing she said is that they are kind of moving away uh, from following the pattern here of doing theatrical releases and making films for theatrical release. They are focused on acquiring content. Yes, making movies, but they will screen on Netflix. So do you, what did you feel about this? Did you feel like she was making some kind of sea change here? Or did, did this make all the sense in the world? And Netflix uh, was dead five years ago, uh, or, or people thought was dead five years ago, is now the king of the mountain right now. Well, well I mean, to, let's let's go point by point. Sure, so sure. WWE, it was very much uh, this is a lone shooter, and we have caught the terrorists, <laughs> and uh, no one else helped him, and that's it. He's gone now. We are not going to invest yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Exactly. Like, you have a fucking yeah. sports league that's pretty fucked up and probably rotten to the core yes. uh, and it's not just one dude but he's gone now so it's everything's like, good don't worry that's nonsense uh, that's so okay nonsense. yeah, yeah. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> um the second part was the duke and duchess of sussex I right don't know if you need to address there but uh, yeah, i can address it in who gives a shit 
Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Just because you're born into a royal family does not give you a creative mind or make you a television producer. Yeah. This is like just we're, these are two famous people who were giving a deal. Yeah. No one gives a fuck about what these two people make. I could give two shits. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people couldn't care less, to be yeah. honest with you. You know, and so, I don't think that they could care less. I don't think Trump Meghan is. and Harry could give two shits. Yeah, they're making their money, man. They're making their money. Hashtag um, <laughs> the, the, the stuff about theatrical. Yes. Listen, I, I get Eric Weber and his whole anti-Netflix stance and all that stuff. Did, let me ask you, does every company in Hollywood need to be the exact same or are we allowed to have different no. business models? Whatever works for you. And look, whatever Netflix is doing works for them. So I think it's well, working pretty fucking well. Yeah. So well, yeah, really to really everyone good. who's like, oh, you know, these guys, they fucking hate cinema and they should be releasing in theater. It's like, that's not the fucking point of Netflix. Yeah. The point of Netflix is for people like my dad who are never coming back to movie theaters. Yeah. Has not seen a movie since the pandemic started in theaters. Yeah. And just, but like, should they not be allowed to see original movies or first run movies on their television sitting at home? There's a huge audience that needs to be served there, and Netflix is serving it. I wish the movies were better. I, thought, I wish they had better taste, you know? But again, everyone is pivoting to the, we basically want to be CBS. We, yeah. we just want to be the kind of safe, you know, and every now and then we'll take, we're going to take one big swing a, a quarter, and yeah. we're still going to do some, you know, award stuff, but we're just not going to be spending, you know, $175 million to make Mank. Yeah, I, I don't think they should. Like, I, this idea of chasing that Oscar, that gold statue, it's really meaning less and less as the years go on. It's really just for the people who actually want that, for the ego stroke or whatever. But at the end of the day, Netflix doesn't need it at all. They're making their money. They are making their money, doing their thing, and people are looking forward to their releases and all the stuff that they're doing. Yeah. Well, okay. it's just like they can license. They don't need to spend all this money making original content when people are yeah. just watching the movies um, yeah. that got a theatrical release, right? Mm -hmm. And the marketing that came with it. That's what people are, are watching on Netflix. Now, you have to understand, yeah. they made the original movies because all the other studios saw, suddenly woke up and saw Netflix as their competition and they pulled right. all the shit off, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, we're, we're just going to silo. So if you want to watch a Warner Brothers movie, you've got to watch it on HBO Max. Right. It's, and the, every studio did that. And then the, they realized, wait, just because we put a movie on Max, it doesn't mean that people are not going to subscribe to Netflix anymore. They're still just watching Netflix. They're just watching crap. They so thought, we, we yeah. need to make more money for our library, for our studio. Let's license shit out. Yeah. They thought they could just kind of co-op off name brand and do exactly what Netflix did without understanding Netflix figured out how to do what they did out of, from 10 years of trying to put all this in motion. You can't just acquire 10 years in like months. You know, it, it, it was very clear. And all the Warner Brothers stuff is now on Netflix. Like all of it is on Netflix for God's sake. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and did you want to say anything about the mothership and uh, Holly Berry's tweet that basically made it seem like she wasn't happy about the decision? I mean, I don't think anybody's happy when you, you know, get... Uh, she says they're happy. Uh, Netflix says they're happy. I don't think Netflix is happy. I think it was, okay. a, tough, I think it was a tough decision for Netflix. Do I think it, the movie was good? I mean, probably not. Yeah. But do I think that that's why it was thrown out? Because it was bad? No. It, okay. Again, it was about the timing and the logistics of everything. If they had a great movie, yeah, they would figure out a way to finish the fucking movie. So I, I get that there were probably some quality issues, but I also think it, it is about the kids aging out. And yeah. again, just chasing bad money after bad. If we don't think that this is going to win, win awards and we don't think this is going to be in the Netflix top 10 for a month, right. then why bother finishing it? If, if, you know, yeah. if we're all, if everybody got paid, Right, it's not like the people didn't get paid. Everybody no, got paid true, out, true. and it's just like, okay, you know, it, it would be really tough to finish it. Should we go to all that effort of getting everyone's schedules together and doing this and doing that and de aging the kids who have grown up? No, it's not worth it. Forget it. Yeah, to Bella Bajari's credit, she said, "This is one. This is a one off. We don't intend to do this with movies. It's not a pattern we want to develop here." At Netflix, very smartly saying that, that, you know, it's not something that we intend to do. I think that they've done it before, too. We just don't know. Probably. Maybe. Probably. Because uh, it was it was intimated to me that, you know, something else had, had maybe happened. Um, mm. and then, you know, then they released the calendar, right, John? And it's got mm. some holes. It's missing some titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? Do you think there's something coming? I, I mean, again... They can, the beauty of Netflix is that they can just be like, hey, this movie's coming out on Friday. Yeah. 
You know, <laughs> here's the trailer. It'll be on the service Friday. They don't need months and months and months right. ahead of time to let us know. Right. That said, is it concerning that after all these years, Havoc is still not on the fucking schedule? Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, I was also expecting the old guard too, and the yeah, electric right. state, right? The Millie Bobby Brown, but like they have a Millie Bobby Brown movie damsel coming out in yeah. March, I think. So is it just a case of, you know, we want to put this movie a little bit closer to stranger things, the final season, you know, which is um, in 2025 now. Not right. Exactly. So it's like, do we want to open 2025 with the electric state? And then, you know, it leads up to yeah. stranger things towards the end of the year. I, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think that because of the strike, right. Like it, I think yeah. Netflix held a bunch of movies for, yeah. you know, because of the strike, because they knew that the pipeline was going to be thin this year. And so some movies that I think, you know, they th they were expecting to release. Yeah. Are just, you know, those cans are getting kicked to 2025 is all. <laughs> I hope it's not Havoc, though, because we've been waiting way too fucking long for that movie. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, okay, so that's the stuff on Netflix. Uh, do you want to get into the Paramount stuff, or do you want to kind of push that aside? Uh, Byron Allen making the new $30 billion offer. Seems like... They're starting to entertain this more and more. They've cut, they've um, uh, what do you put, put together a group here to listen to this and have conversations about it. That does not include Sherry Redstone, so there's no like um, conflict of interest here to consider his proposal. Do you think this is just to pass time until Warner Brothers can weigh in on this? What are your thoughts? Yes, I do. I think that this is all smoke and mirrors and, you know, Ellison, and Byron Allen. And this is just like Sherry leaking every offer that crosses her desk so that the stock, you know, keeps getting bumped up. I think it went up 15 percent uh, yes. based on this report or something like that. Um, I just I don't what would be the what is the point? I mean, I know I know that the bids are complimentary in the sense that Byron Allen is after the TV channels and David Ellison is after the movie studio. So it's right. like, you know, could they team up for a bid and then, you know, split the assets that, that they want? I just don't see how this is like good for Paramount investors or good for Sherry's like the Redstone legacy. Yeah, and it's all about like, what is most important, you know? Um, it's way too fucking yeah. complicated. Like I can't get the studio, but I can get voting shares that'll give me power over the studio through Paramount global like it just all just look how much is everything i just want to buy the whole fucking thing don't give me part of the house i don't want to just buy the shed in the back i want the whole fucking house how much is it you know? a lot again a lot of it's about the real estate too because the lot is like right in the middle of hollywood mm. it's like a great lot and i don't know That's there's, true. there's a lot of, of factors i think that this is going to drag out for quite some time yeah, yeah. um and I yeah mean, we will see if it, again Warner Brothers' hands are tied until April, right? Yeah, yeah, April. Because right, they, they can't do anything in the, until April. So maybe this is Sherry just out. like, yeah, yeah. right, exactly. Let's just fucking stall and like drag this thing out until April, and then we'll see if Warner Brothers can come to the table. That's what it seems like to me, just from reading the analysis on a number of business sites. And IndieWire did a nice breakdown of it, and so did um, uh, uh, THR. It seems to me like they're just entertaining bids and make it seem like they're interested until Warner Brothers is able to actually launch a serious bid. And then see where they go from there. So there's passing away the time for a four or three more months, it is in essence. Um, all right, let's move on to the big story here. 28 years later, has landed at Sony Pictures. Danny Boyle and Alex, Alex Garland have uh made the deal here with Sony Pictures. There's no concrete um evidence or or news that Killian Murphy will be coming back. But certainly those two now have landed uh, there at Sony Pictures. Do you like this uh, for them, Jeff? Do you think this is the right move for them? Um, and uh, yeah, your thoughts over. And do you think Sony will do right by them with this, uh, with this, uh, these two films or these three films? What are your thoughts? Considering how much they're fucking up the Sony Spider Verse, do you really trust them to do well with this? I'm wait. I'm lost. What are we talking about? Uh, the 28 years later. 28 years oh, later. Oh, oh, oh. Later. Um... I mean, Sony needs IP. They don't have as much IP as the other studios. Uh, this is a well-known IP with a top-tier director. Yeah. And the budget isn't as high as it was previously re re reported to be. You know, I think it came out that they were going to be 75 apiece. Now it's 60. 60. Yeah. A, little bit, a little bit more palatable. Um, yeah, I think, you know, as a studio, you, you got to make a play for, for certain packages. Uh, and and yeah. this is a proven one. And that could very well bring back the star of a billion-dollar movie, you know, uh, Killian yeah. Murphy. 
Yeah. I mean, if he's EPing it, like I think it's pretty clear he's going to be back, right? If he wants to be involved from an EP perspective, it's yeah, like, maybe well, might, as, might as well take yeah a payday if I can get it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that he'll be the lead. Um, and I don't think that anything will be decided until after the Oscars, because then if he wins, oh. you know, his quote's going to go up. Right, right. Uh, or that may change the tra- trajectory of his career, and, and maybe some huge director wants him when that movie's going, and he can't come back for the yeah. first film or something. Maybe he pops up for the second one. Again, get a trilogy to fill. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think this is a good play by Sony, but I also think that it, like, did they beat Warner Brothers or the two of them going head to head? For this movie, no, I, I don't interpret it like that. I think Warner Brothers is getting Ryan Coogler's vampire movie, and they're just like, listen, you know, if we're dropping ninety million on this, we're not going to commit, you know, sixty yeah. million to to twenty years later. Someone else can have that. Yeah, sixty million times what two or three? I think right. They're doing a, a trilogy, a new trilogy, possibly. So that's a lot of money you're investing in in something. Yeah, I mean, and this uh, the THR article speculates that it was the re- relationship between Tom Rothman and Danny Boyle, which goes back 30 years, that really kind of helped this thing land at Sony Pictures um, because Rothman kind of approved li- a lifeless ordinary on the beach uh, and um, Slumdog Millionaire under 27 hours. So a lot of connections there with Danny Boyle in that way. Uh, I like it that we finally have a studio now. We can go forward. Now let's make this thing happen and see if it's any damn good. Um, all right. You also talked about a Fast and the Furious movie. You reported this in your newsletter. Uh, this is being written by the Tomorrow Wars Zach Dean. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Uh, what do you anticipate that this will be? Uh, regale us with your thoughts on all this, Jeff. Um, well, yes, I've been looking into all the fast stuff the last few weeks. Mm. Uh, very unclear what Zach Dean is writing, but Zach Dean got... He's, he wrote The Tomorrow War, he got story yeah. credit on Fast X, and he has now been tapped to write a screenplay in the Fast universe. Is it Fast 11? They wouldn't say. Is it oh, the, the okay. Bridge movie? They wouldn't say. Okay. You know, and I tried uh, tried getting the answer and uh, just got stonewalled at every turn. But um, he is writing something. I, I don't know if it's just... Those are the only two movies I am aware of. Okay. Right? The Bridge movie and, and Fast 11 or Fast mm-hmm. X Part 2. So... You would think that he is working on one of those. Yeah. But I don't know if it's just a reluctance to say, yeah, it is one of those, which means, i.e., he's rewriting the people who they hired to do them. Yeah. Um, and and that was something that my insider sort of pushed back on from the first report was like, well, technically we haven't thrown out the the Orrin Uziel, Christina Hodson draft. Mm. There's, you know, there's still some good stuff in there that we're going to use. And I'm like, okay, but you're higher, aren't you? Are, are they the writers of the movie or are you looking for another writer? Which is yeah, definitely yeah. what I'd heard. So whether, whether Zach Dean is that writer or someone else, I don't know okay. whether Zach Dean has come in to replace Chris Morgan on, you know, uh, the bridge movie with Dwayne Johnson. I don't know. Yeah. I did think it was interesting um, that, yeah, that, that, that bridge movie won't be called Hobbs and Reyes. And now I don't, I think that was just a rumored title. I don't think that was ever officially announced. Um, but again, I, I just hear that, you know, Dante was a divisive villain in Fast X, and and mm. they are looking to bring in someone else to be the next big baddie. You know, will it be Hobbs and Reyes twenty twenty four A D? Will it possibly be that title that comes down from this thing? That was a good one. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right, uh, we'll keep tabs on that. Obviously, since uh, you, you you know we don't have any more uh, blood. To I take. love all these fucking insiders, John. We have so many insiders in our chat who know everything. Did you know that? Yeah, well, yes, I know. They like to speculate on on the comment section, which I appreciate how much they think they know. But uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, let's move on to Donnie Yen. Highlight: He's going to be starring in a adaptation of Kung Fu, uh, the classic series. The classic series. This is going to be for Universal Pictures in eighty seven North. Dude, they already have Warrior, which was in essence like a, it was what they got Kung Fu from in Bruce Lee's writings. Uh, and that was a much more accurate portrayal of this. But now we're getting a uh, a film here uh, from uh, uh, from Universal Pictures in 87 North of the old Kung Fu series that starred David Carradine. But Donnie Yen will star. So what are your thoughts on this, man? Uh, do you like this? Do you remember this series at all? What are your, what are your thoughts? I didn't grow up with this series. And when I saw that announcement today, I inside my head did a little uh, best of luck <laughs> i mean I, I i i don't think that um first of all again I, I don't know if this ultimately does get made but if it does mm. is it just like another nobody another um nobody director you mean 
no, no, no. Like nobody of the movie with Bob Odenkirk. Like oh, that, that oh. kind of like a violent night, like, you know, 20, 30 million kind of B movie with some action, yeah, yeah. you know. Who is going to see this? Well, I am if it comes out because I'm a massive fan of the Kung Fu series. If people don't remember, if you don't remember, David Carradine played a Kung Fu martial artist who went from town to town solving crimes or solving issues uh, and teaching philosophies. And Donnie politics. Yen, John. Donnie Yen. Well, Donnie guy. Yen, because well, the big criticism with David Carradine is not Asian. And that was a big criticism as we got older about the whole situation there. So you want to go with an Asian person. Donnie Yen's Definitely. a great choice. Great actor. Donnie Most Yen artist. is global. two things. Oh, boy. Here we go. You can look at Donnie Yen as, wow, they got Donnie Yen. He's an international superstar. That he is. Or you can look at Donnie Yen as like, this sounds like a VOD movie. Okay, man. Okay. What? <laughs> the man is an international superstar. So, um, but I an like an international that. superstar who, again, if you're an executive at, at Universal Pictures, are you betting your job and and your livelihood on on that movie and and uh, uh, no. committing a thirty to forty million dollar marketing campaign in addition to the budget? No, I, I think, like no. you said, we're going the nobody route with this one. Uh, but still, it could be good because I like nobody and I like uh, Violent Night or whatever. I thought that was good. Right. Um, but but these are people who are <laughs> Bob Odenkirk, big, big TV star who everyone knows from Breaking Bad. David Arbor, big TV star. Everybody knows from Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Donnie Yen, big international star. Yeah. But is he a star star, like a name above the, the title and the poster and people are going to see the new Donnie Yen movie? I don't think so. Okay. You can be as big an international superstar as you want. I don't <laughs> think my brothers know him. You what? Who? My brothers. Oh, yeah. They know him. So they, they don't. Know. I don't think they do. Oh, you don't think they do? Okay. No. All right. Fair enough. Um, all right. Let's move on. One last thing here before we get to our reviews. Uh, Christopher Nolan was talking about uh, movies here after the success of Oppenheimer and, of course, the 13 Oscar nominations. Uh, and he says that he thinks the success of Oppenheimer quote, certainly points to a sort of post-franchise, post-intellectual property, a.k.a. IP, landscape for movies. It's kind of encouraging. He was on a podcast here hosted by uh, uh, Alex Zane. So do you think he's telling the truth that we've kind of hit this breaking point in IP superhero franchise-type movies and that people are going to be gravitating to the theater for more intellectual fair like Oppenheimer. I would love to believe that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, do I have faith in my fellow man and that, that my fellow <laughs> man is getting smarter when it comes to entertainment choices? No. Yeah. I think the audience is, I mean, as smart as kids are now and the, you know, it's, it's wild smart. because they have, you know, their yeah. uh, access to the world at their fingertips. Um, no, I, I, in general see the culture getting dumber. From a cultural perspective. Yeah, yeah. He was saying the studios that there, he said that the, he reminded uh, that the studios, there that there is an appetite for something people haven't seen before, an approach to things that people haven't seen before. Everybody has a tendency to talk down movies. For the whole time I've been working movies, I felt the cultural establishment was always predicting the demise of movie theaters. And I now get asked the question of, what do I think about the health of the movie business? Um, you know, he says, it, we did well with the movie. And three and uh, three hour rated film did well. So it's got to vote for something. But I don't think so. I think it's an anomaly. You know, it's an anomaly. It was caught up with the Barbie stuff and benefited from it. It's an excellent film. Obviously, it's my favorite film of the year. I think it'll win Best Picture. But I don't think it signals a sea change where people all of a sudden are going to want more intellectual three-hour biopic-type movies. I don't think there's all. The franchise stuff will always be there. We're never, ever, ever getting away from franchise stuff. If they're from Christopher Nolan, people will go see. Yeah, but yeah I, I don't think uh, if some random director had made Oppenheimer, I don't think it would have grossed anywhere close to nine hundred. Oh yeah, million. If it, even if it, even if it was the exact same movie. Agreed. Agreed. All right, let's take one last break, and on the other side, we'll do the reviews to answer your final Streamlabs super chats, and we'll get on out of here. Um, so we'll be right back right after this. Dude, the time codes on this one are going to be a bitch. They're going to be a bitch. All right. So uh, Wiley asked us about, Wiley Todd asked us about Argyle and about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I did not see Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I don't have any interest in seeing it. Maybe I'll see because I love Donald, but eh, we'll see. 
I thought the film was a medium film anyway, so I wasn't that excited about a series. But I did see Argyle, so let's talk about that. Uh, Non-spoiler. Your thoughts, Argyle, Jeff? It was bad. <laughs> yeah, right? It, it was, was a mess. Yeah, yeah. I love Matt Vaughn. I would love to have sat here and defended Matt Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I think he, he's a great guy. Yes, he is. I don't know what he was thinking here. It is too damn long at two hours and 20 minutes. There's Insane. no logical reason it should be two hours and Insane. 20 minutes. Insane. $200 million for that? I do not understand. Um, I agree. Yeah, I thought Henry Cavill was good. I thought Sam Rockwell was Wait, good. Was he in the movie? <laughs> oh, Henry Cavill was in the movie? I didn't even realize that. I thought John Cena and Ariana DeBose, for the minutes they were allowed to be on screen, were good. But, like, it was so cliche. It was so kind of boring. There's no magic, no spark. And there's no chemistry between Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell. And I don't think, I don't think she's a lead. I'll be honest with you. I was not interested in her character. I was not interested in what she was doing. I could care less about what happened. And we already saw a lot of what you see in the film. And Sam was just cashing a paycheck. God love Sam Jackson. He's like, how much you paying me to sit here and giggle? I'll take it. You know, so, yeah. Insulting his own podcast co-host, Matt <laughs> Uh I mean, I, I sat next I to... I, was good. I yeah. sat next to uh, Christian watching this, and we were just like, dude. Are you watching what Nost is doing on the screen right now? <laughs> like, he's so Nosty. Um, he he's was. fucking Nost Malone. Uh, I disagree on the chemistry point. I actually thought Ugh. that they actually did have a little bit of chemistry. Insane. But I agree with you that how do you spend $200 million on a Bryce Dallas Howard Sam Rockwell movie? She's, 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 she, yeah, she was the wrong choice. It there. is financially it's financial malfeasance i mean it's like yeah. completely irresponsible what were they thinking yeah. and it's like if you're going to i see i don't want to okay we're, we're venturing into spoiler territory i don't want okay, to okay. um just yeah. I, again on a script level yeah. i thought this was so convoluted yeah i thought it was a, a, an, a, an absolute mess um there are it's not a Bad. It's not like a horrible movie. No, it's not it, it entertaining. Like yeah, yeah. you know, it's watchable. Sure, but yeah, sure. way too long. And just there'll be a good scene, and then there'll be like twenty minutes of exposition. Exposition. What, John? What are the stakes of this movie? What are they? What happens? Like, if the division, I don't even know what they're trying to get their hands on. I totally forgot. It's a, a file, it, a book. It's a yeah. It's all the information about the spies. Kind of like in the it's first the it's the list. It's the knock list, basically. Yeah, it's it's so, a knock list, yeah. Some completely forgettable MacGuffin. Yeah. I don't know what the stakes were. Like, if the division gets their hands on this, is, is the world going to end? Like, is there going to be a terrorist attack? Like, just stake free. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It was, it was frustrating as it went along. And then Matthew Vaughn's direction. Like, normally I like his out of the box, out there kind of choices with his style. Uh, but it was really ridiculous in a lot of moments. And I was just like, this doesn't work at all. I caught myself looking at my watch. When I realized it was still 30, 35 minutes left in the fucking movie, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So Dude, what was with the CGI? Yeah, the CGI on the cat was. That's like something I could Forget the cat. Cat. The explosions oh, towards the end? Where's the $200 million if Dude, you're doing CGI? Yeah. This shit didn't look finished. Yeah. It looked... Yeah. Like something like an app on your phone that you would create an, a fake explosion with like a decade ago when we got those apps. I could put up my green screen right now and give you the same kind of uh, uh, CGI that you got in the movie. It, and it was, was fucking surprising. wild. And I really did want to defend Matthew. Yeah. But I, I can't. I, again, the, the readers have to come first. I have yeah. to be honest with you guys. This is so not worth your money. Wait a few weeks and watch it on Peacock yeah. or Apple. Excuse me. Watch it on Apple. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what about Mr. and Mrs. Smith? You got a chance to see that. Don't I did, me. and you're making a huge, huge fucking mistake. Really? Okay. Yep. Talk Lock. me into it. I've got a weekend. There's no football. Talk me into it. Get, get Mrs. Outlaw, get a blanket, <laughs> and sit there. You do four hours and four hours. Or, you know, it's like four episodes, four episodes, maybe three and a half hours at a time. <laughs> okay. I, I did this in basically two nights. Okay. It was great. 
I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I do want to try to finish the uh, review tonight and send it out before um, okay. my screening. But um, uh, a minus. Wow, a minus. Okay, not was never a big Maya Erskine person. Yeah, thought she, she did a good job. In fact, I'm glad it was her and not Phoebe Waller Bridge. I, mm, I think that okay, it being her. This is a really good performance, and I'll tell you something else. Yeah. Again, I've known Donald since he was 18 years old. Yes. I thought this was the best he's ever been. Wow. Atlanta was not really for me. Like, I I was proud of him and and happy for him for, you know, his success with that show. But it just wasn't for me and that character. I loved what he was doing here. Hmm. He's just so fucking cool. Okay. Um, the guest stars are good. They have good chemistry. It's totally different because you're not, it's not Brad and Angelina. Okay. You know, you're not just waiting for them to have sex and start shooting each other and stuff. It, it, over eight episodes, they really dig into like what a relationship is and what makes it tick and, and growing together and fights and, and what happens when you're like stuck with a person, right? Yeah. Cause you work with them too. Uh, this was a really, really good show and another win for Amazon and Jen Salki coming off of Reacher. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it an episode or two. We'll see if we like it. We'll see if we like it. We are knee deep in Night Country, man. We are fucking loving that show. And I tell you, having a uh, Native American girlfriend, uh, it makes the show interesting. It's almost like pop-up video with some of the questions that I have about what's going on in certain sections of the show. She gives me some analysis here that's interesting. So I'm looking forward to the last, what, two episodes that are left? So... I can't wait to see it, man. I can't wait to see it. Um, all right. Guys, Jeff liked the idol, though, so don't believe anything he said. Don't believe anything he said. Take it with a grain of salt. This could be another idol. This could just be Donald Glover get, getting naked and fucking... See, I mean, what are you talking about, Haunted Autumn? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes, Haunted. That's really stupid. That's very stupid. Everyone's got shit that they like that a lot of people don't like. It's, that's how it goes. I bet Haunted Autumn, I bet you got a lot of those shitty Sandler films on your fucking show. Fucking um, God, these fucking commenters are going to drive me up a goddamn wall. We should raise the goddamn limits. Ma- make them pay $100 a comment. God, I like this. Uh, Brett Stevens says, WB seems to be making some of their old movies now with Bullet, The Thin Man, now 50-Foot Woman. Is there a WB classic you'd personally like to see, Jeff? Ooh. That's a tough question. I've already I've already uh, answered this one in the newsletter, but it you is did? Okay. it is the 1967 Audrey Hepburn film. Wait until dark. Oh, wait until dark. Mm, nice choice. Okay, all right. How about the Maltese Falcon? I'll, I'll, I'll just default to that because I love the Maltese Falcon. Nice noir. Let's get a noir back. Modern noir. Adam S.C. says, Tarantino's book, Cinema Speculation, has a chapter about a 70s genre critic, Kevin Thomas, that he adored. Do we know where the Pauline stuff came from? A bunch of film critics who thought, well, if you're making a, a movie about a film critic and it's not Roger Ebert, it must be Pauline Kael. It has to be Pauline Kael. It has to be. Uh, Adam Blue says, any news on the Gundam live action film from Legendary and Jordan Vote Roberts? I don't think no. so. Yeah. All right. Princess Positive says, will the WWE survive the McMahon scandal? Yes. 100%. They're already yeah. surviving it. They're already surviving it. dude. He's gone. What scandal? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Haunted underscore Autumn said, don't yell at him. said, please, God, let the Channing Tatum as Gambit go away. It's been over a decade. The rumor's hanging on harder than terminal cancer. Who wants this? Uh, clearly, a lot of people do if it's still hanging on. Haunted Autumn. The world doesn't Guys, live. We just saw Kelsey Grammer That's as a beast. fucking beast. Yeah. And people liked it. Yeah. So never underestimate the shit that will make people happy. Nostalgia. Uh, Mega Tube, can you all do a Hitchcock, Hitchcock draft? Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Maybe someday. No? Oh, okay, Jeff. Pass. All right, fine. Goopy G says Curb premieres on Sunday. Yeah. Best comedy series on TV. Larry David on the Today Show choking Elmo this morning. So uh, your thoughts here. You're looking forward to pumped, this? Pumped to have Larry back. Mad that HBO didn't send me the screeners. <laughs> or invite me to the premiere. This is the other thing. You put in how much fucking time in with these companies, right? Had a great relationship with HBO back in the day. And the people who were in charge there, Nancy and Mara and Ron, and all them are gone now. And you have a new regime now. And they don't know who the fuck you are unless you write for a trade. They don't give a shit about your newsletter. And you're just some person. Uh, and and they, you don't get fucking invite you anywhere. And the only time you talk is when you email them and you say, I'm going to be reporting Caitlin Deaver and The Last of Us. And I'm going to be reporting Kate Heron directing The Last of Us. And we can do this all fucking day. There you go, WB. 
Send a fucking invite, HBO. There you go. Uh, Adam Messis is just contributing towards a future where Jeff never has to talk about Star Wars again. Also, John, looking forward to your deep dive on Scorsese. Yeah, our first episode of the Goodfellas Revisit uh, drops tomorrow on the Cinephile. So get ready for that. It was a fun conversation. Uh, it's going to be a three-parter, just letting you know. It's going to be a three-parter. Right. Steve and Three I. Three-part Scorsese pod? Yep. We we went bone deep on uh, on Goodfellas, so and people loved our um, previous ones where we went multiple parts. So that one's going to be a good one for you guys. Haunted on Scorpion says Killian said like six months ago he'd be game to return to the days later franchise. So as long as Boyle and Garland were the ones behind the project, he's coming back, and that was decided months ago. I'm, I'm my head's going to explode, John. <laughs> Follow up to Killian Murphy Super Chat. That is, of course, in my opinion. Did have enough, have enough room there, not pretending I know anything. LOL. He saved himself. He saved. Thank him. you, Haunted Adam. Okay. Sorry for yelling at you earlier. <laughs> Welcome to my life, people, with Jeff Snyder. Uh, when Edward says, I love when the hot mic gets really dude, hot. And then- it, it, dude, if only you should be my fucking uh, the, the dentist receptionist, okay? Me? What? Because they get it the worst. <laughs> oh, last time. Oh, your, yeah, yeah. Yes, my, my dentist receptionist, because they get all the angry emails when my teeth get fucked up. The last time on, on my way out of there, I like she was on the phone with somebody. I'm like, I go. I'm like, listen, no matter what I say in an email or a voicemail, you're an angel. Because oh. this was nothing. You guys, this is nothing compared to the fucking tirade I unleashed on that dentist. Oh, my God. All right. And Wayne Edwards says, I love when the hot mic gets really hot. And then you both can come together and respectfully disagree and move forward. Yeah. Also, Io Edabiri is cute, not sexy, a hell of an actress, but she looks like an adolescent. Again, that is all subjective subjective you know and that's my that was the only point i was trying to make on tuesday was that jeff may not find her sexy but it doesn't mean other people don't find her sexy so it's all objective. I'm just reporting how she's seen in the industry uh okay uh by the way she looks good i saw the promo that she cut for snl because she's hosting this yeah, weekend. She is hosting. Yeah, yeah and uh she looked great and she she fixed her teeth as well i mean you can tell that she maybe went to a better dentist than i did huh. Um, well, that happens. As, yeah, she, as, uh, she, 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 you're right. She, she is cute, but she's not fucking Harley Quinn. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, but Harley Quinn doesn't have to be sexy. Ugh, well, right. In my opinion, she does, John. Okay, fair. Haunted underscore Autumn says Matthew Vaughn hasn't made a great film since Layer Cake. I said what I said. All right, here's ten dollars. I was just giving you crap about the <laughs> idol. Sorry. And then at Johnny Deacon says, if you guys could watch one tomorrow, what would you want to watch? Vineland PTA's new film or the movie critic? Oh, please, the movie critic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, no. do no, we no. not? Do we forget the last pension uh, adaptation that that Paul Tom Zander did? It was unwatchable. Yeah, yeah. And what was that um, stupid film that I hated? He did. I, I can't with PTA. He's already lost. I didn't like Inherent Vice. Inher- that's but, what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. That's a pinch on. Yeah, uh, and I didn't like the most recent one with the kid. 15 year old licorice pizza, yeah. Licorice like, pizza sucked my dick. I hated that movie. Man. I like licorice pizza. I Ugh. hated Inherent Vice. I, I hated Inherent Vice. Vice. That movie, what a waste of Joaquin Phoenix. That movie was Jesus. Um, all right, last stream labs. Let's see if we got anything here. Trent they says, What do you guys see Darren Aronofsky following up his Vegas Sphere f- uh, film with? Or perhaps something commercial or indie? Jeff Darren Aronofsky, his Sphere film. What will he follow it up with? feel like i know the answer to this okay. um hold on one second okay guys you guys are sending in one dollar look i don't want to be mad at you all but and i go people like oh don't make fun of the people who send in money i will if you're sending in one dollar and you're asking a massive question or a huge question right like be respectful of our time if you're gonna send in a big question five bucks if you're gonna send in like hey you know um uh, saw this what do you think real quick Dollar, fine. But a massive question? No. I'd rather not have your dollar, to be honest. Like, I'll be truthful. I'd rather okay. not have your dollar. Go ahead. Aronofsky. This guy has a lot going on. Go ahead. Off the whale. So first of up, I think he's focused on the Elon Musk biopic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There was a project that he did, or the, I think it was announced like a decade ago. Yeah. Look at look at something called like Riverview. Okay. It may have been announced as a series. That might be a movie now. I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. Um, Emperor, he was attached to. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that was supposed to be his next. And I'm told that the financing, it's getting more and more expensive and the financing is starting to get shaky. Yeah. And then here's the the interesting one. Now, 
I don't know. I don't. I'm not putting this out there as like a scoop or as news. Okay. So okay. I know the aggregators are going to run. I mean, no matter what I say, I'm fucked. Fair Great. Right. Um, but back in the day, yeah, Does that Darren happen? Aronofsky was supposed to direct yeah. a movie for MGM. Do you know what it was? I don't remember. What was it? Robocop. Oh, yes. God, yes. Jesus. And then Jose Padilla ended up doing it. By the way, right. you're taking all this time on a dollar question, and you're going to complain to me that we're going almost to two hours. So I'm just letting you know right now. I don't give a uh, – dude, I don't okay. look at the, que- the the dollar amount and then tailor my answer. You get a, a dollar gets a quick answer. This is the fucking answer. All right. Don't cry. Darren Aronofsky. Go ahead. Yeah. I think this guy wanted to make a RoboCop movie back in the day. Okay. Didn't get a chance. Ooh. They ended up – Right, doing Jose Padilla and, and Joel Kinnaman. Right now, RoboCop is coming back around in a very different police world. Yes, right. MGM, Amazon, that deal. They're trying to mine the library. Idea. Just saying, wouldn't be surprised if he was at the top of a list. That would be a great choice. Not saying he's coming back to do RoboCop. Just saying he was interested before. Now another studio is looking to do a RoboCop movie. Maybe it works out. Yeah. See, still Bill knows this is a five dollar answer for sure. That's well, that person can add another four dollars and then they can just <laughs> toss it my way for giving you good dirt. Uh, Porter Geekin, Porter Geekin says, Thoughts on James Gunn's, James Gunn's comments on variety on how weird it was to cast Supergirl without a director. That wasn't James Gunn's comments, that was Matthew Vaughn's comments. Um, on how it was ca- to cast Supergirl with what we addressed it on, on Tuesday. So if you want to watch our thoughts on that, uh, Porter Geekin, you can go to our Tuesday show. I have the time code out there, and you can watch the Supergirl discussion. What a world, by the way, where, where I mean, directors are just weighing in on other people. They're just answering questions intended for other people. Yeah. I mean, Matthew Vaughn, like, yeah, what? Right. Why, why do you need to tell everybody that, uh, that that Patty Jenkins didn't want Gal Gadot? Like, I could see if you had a good film that you were promoting. Then you could get away. Right, that, that's that. the problem. When, when these directors start talking about everything but their movie, I think that they're kind of aware. That's a giving away. It's giving it away. Right. Let's talk about how I want to direct Supergirl. Forget the first movie <laughs> that I direct. Let's talk about how I want to do something else. Uh, all right. One last thing. Uh, Mega two. Wait, wait, real quickly, John. Matthew Vaughn needs to get away from these movies. He needs to go back to Layer Cake. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah. Go go do something small, not affiliated with any universes that you're trying to build. Yeah. Please, for the love of God. And whoever said that he hadn't done a good movie since Layer Cake is obviously forgetting Kick Ass, which is one of the best comic book movies ever made. Yeah. Hunter on Squirrel says, uh, here's for the long Robocop answer and penance for my earlier hot takes. Thank you. Brandon says, do you think the 90s is the next genre films will be focused on for either fiction or nonfiction story? Maybe the 80s is slowly going away. Jeff. Well, we're about to get Beverly Hills Cop 4. So I don't, I don't know even know what that means. Do I slowly think going. He's a, do, yeah. Uh, like the style. Will we get some 90s type movies, like stuff set in the 90s, so to speak? Oh. I mean, we're getting heat too. Uh, we're yeah. people are they're trying to remake Face Off. So yeah, I think yeah. that the '90s are are getting ripe again. Face Off, um, Haunted Autumn. You've spent a lot of money today, by the way. I hope that you're subscribed to my newsletter. <laughs> you, you know what? Blowing it on stream chats. I mean, no, stop it. Mickey Da says, John and Jeff, are you all ever going to get food and do a movie sleepover? Maybe grab some fast food, burgers, or burrito, and binge watch a mystery show together. No, I mean, but the possibility could exist uh, once we establish the Patreon that we do a certain level where you get to actually hang out with Jeff and I online on a Zoom situation or a StreamYard situation where we watch a show or a movie together so you get our actual conversations about it uh, in real time. Well, I don't know. Now, now that Roke is not in the HCA anymore, maybe when he comes to LA, he'll actually give me a call. <laughs> What's got nothing to do with that? It's got nothing to do with it. You just come to LA for the award shows and the celebrities, not me. But I didn't come to the award show. I was sick. So um, one last one better. from Megatube. Thoughts on the new Guy Ritchie trailer? And uh, are there is there any word on that Skydance animation film, Spellbound? Oh, yeah, he already asked that. So anyway, thoughts on the Guy Ritchie trailer? I got an, 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 a Spellbound update, though. While we... <laughs> Oh, did you really? Bring it on. Uh, they just said um, uh, the Holiday Corridor. The holidays uh, okay now. so look for it to come then okay end of the fair year enough. fair enough um all right yeah the the mystery of ungentlemanly warfare that trailer dropped earlier this week Dude, night and day there. john night and day henry cavill between henry cavill and that trailer who actually looks like he's like having fun yeah. and the henry cavill we get in argyle 
which quite frankly is he's just like a black hole of charisma. Well, I mean, you know, when you've got the right director who understands what you can bring to a project, it's amazing how you stand out as an actor, right? Um, that movie, I mean, it looks fun. It it, do, it does look funny. I mean, it looks it's just inglorious. It's just yeah, really glorious bastards. But like, yeah. sure, yeah, I'll watch some Nazis get killed for two hours. Sure, it's inglorious bastards with British accents. But you've also got guy uh, uh, Alan Richson being a part of this. Easy e Gonzalez, him or Easy Gonzalez, him, uh, 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 Henry Cavill, and a nice collection of British uh, um, ensemble characters. So an actor. So I, I this looks like a lot of fun. And this is once again Guy Ritchie kind of branching out, right? I mean, like. This is not a British gangster film. So with Aladdin, Wrath of Man, The Covenant, right. and now this, I like that he is stretching out. And to me, they've worked. Every single one of those films, when he's moved away from the British gangster stuff, has worked for me. So I'm looking forward to this one. When so Matt Vaughn, call up your buddy and take a page out of his playbook. Mix it up. Do different genres. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. Um, all right, let's wrap it up. Uh, this person says, Jeff, do you have a little scoop to drop on us today? Any scoop you want to drop right at the end here, Jeff? Anything you got? No. They, they got to change the title to that Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Though. <laughs> title, terrible title. Is it too long? It's too long. It's a mouthful, and it's just ungentlemanly warfare. What the fuck? Ungentlemanly. All right, I'm going to give you one rumor, two rumors I've heard, and okay. we'll see if they pass Jeff's smell test. The first, oh God, is everybody buckle up here. Here we go. This is this is the part of the podcast where uh, I get in trouble for something I didn't Why say. Why do you get in trouble? This is not about you. Because it all comes back to me. Oh, Jesus. Well, tell them to come talk to me if they got an issue. Um, this person says they can't confirm this at a, for 100%, but from what they're hearing from a number of sources, they're pretty sure that the Anya Taylor-Joy rumors for Fantastic Four are not true. So... We will see if she if this is true or not true down the road if she gets cast Silver Server and that uh, he this person is hearing that they are um, in early development for a new Conan the Barbarian uh, and that some and this is at Netflix some of the actors Netflix might be looking at are Alexander Skarsgård, Alan Richson, Charlie Hunnam, Henry Cavill, Richard Madden, and Kit Harington basically the entire cast of Game of Thrones so could be interesting down the road to see if we get a Conan the Barbarian uh, but Ooh. they are in early development. Right? Just throwing it out there. Where did you get that list? You know, that is the most preposterous list. <laughs> it's a nice They're list. looking at Alan Richson and Kit Harrington. I mean, who depending on how they want to go with it. I you like you said, three as Conan lists. the Barbarian, Kit Harrington can fit inside Alan Richson's ball sack. <laughs> uh if you say so, I've never seen his ball sack. So what? Uh yeah, no, I haven't. Uh Co I mean sure, I guess those those pass muster, sure. Okay. I don't think um, Anya Taylor Joy. I mean, her quote's only going up. I mean, she started yeah. in, in Furiosa, like she's getting expensive. Do I think that they're going to break the bank for a supporting character in, in Fantastic Four? Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I'm okay. Let's wrap it up there. We're at two hours. All right. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it madly. Uh, Jeff, uh, please let them know where they can find you and what you got going on, my man. TheInsnyder.com. Every single person who is spending two hours watching us and sometimes four hours a week watching us, spend $100 on this newsletter. Yeah. You'll, you will get a, an email every day for a year. It's 250 emails. Each email is between 2,000 and 5,000 words. Do the math. See how many books that is a year. Uh, yes. Thank you for subscribing. And I'm only freaking out because the last couple of days of Stripe have not been great. So, oh, thank you. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. It's yeah. been a great month. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate all the support. Yeah. But things are starting to slow down and I'm still breaking scoops. So, yeah. Hot Dog Score Time says Harrington has huge balls. All right. There you go. I don't know anything about that. Um, all right. Well, thank you all so much. As for me, you can follow me at The Roca Says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, The Outlaw Nation on Twitch. Thanks to every one of you who sent in Streamlabs and Super Jets. Yes, I may give you the the dollar ones a little bit of shit, but I'm trying to help you to understand the the exchange for what you're giving here. Be aware of what you're asking versus how much you're donating. It matters. You may be upset about me. That's fine. I'll take the hits, but it matters. Okay. Um, and uh, if you want to keep sending stuff in, as we if you're watching it later, as we just went live, if you're watching it later, you can hit that super thanks button and send in some support for all we talked about today uh, here as well. Leave your comments down below as well. Hit a like on this video, share it on your social media, subscribe to the channel. Really big deal. Want to get to 50,000 by the end of the year. Subscribe to the channel. Would appreciate it. And uh, have a good weekend. Go see a movie. And we'll talk to you next time.
with another brand new episode here of the Hot Mic. Peace. <laughs>